in a We Are Wrestling. Presents Turning Point. Tonight, the Latin American Exchange faces America's most wanted in the flag challenge. Plus, new NWA Camp Abyss defends against Christian Cage and Sting. And Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe. One rematch, one rematch only. It's time for Turning Point. himself. It's not Dr. Fine. It's Dr. Nash. Kevin Nash joins us. Let's get this elimination off. Is it just me or do I look like Race Bannon from Introducing Johnny Quest? Introducing participant number uh, one from Brooklyn, New York, Sushi! Competitor number one in this five-way matchup, the Warrior, but I think you know that by now, Dr. Nash. Warrior. He is absolutely. You know, I have to ask the former Tennessee Falls basketball star, have you found that SEC title ring yet? I have not. <laughs> I, have not found, I have not found the ring, but we, got, we, we actually have a uh, congressional uh, thing going in on that right now. From Elizabeth, New Jersey, Tim Lincoln! 
Oh, yep. lethal injection. Yeah, I knew you were headed in that direction. <laughs> uh, yep, the youngest member of the TNA roster, New Jerseyite, 21 year old Jay Lethal. Yep, notorious for the lethal injection, if you will. From Detroit, Michigan, Luke Shelley. I, I can't help it. One of the funniest things I ever saw when you asked the equal question, my heart, after you broke it. What do you mean funny? This kid. I thought it was heartfelt. I did too. <laughs> this kid idolizes you. He worships you. He just tries to make you happy. He's my home boy. Hey, I love the guy. That's right. Factor in that Michigan connection as well. Shelly from Detroit, as well as the hometown of Kevin Nash. Good looks just go into that state, don't they? The fourth participant oh. is from Bombay, India, Son Chita. The repeated accusations that you have made about the original player from the Himalaya, Sanjay Nutt, they just shocked the hell out of me. He's on the clear. I can't oh. catch him. This guy's on the clear. If nothing and else, Sanjay is on a ton of diuretics. He is from TV Land, the host star. Wow, he looks great tonight. All right, go ahead. This is your chance to put this kid he over. He looks great. He's got to be the odds on favor tonight. Well, we start the brave child of Kevin Nash here tonight, the Paparazzi Challenge Series. This is going to be an elimination match. Now, this PCS, this, ha this has nothing to do with the PCS, the Bowl Championship Series, does it? No, this isn't screwed up. Michigan's not out on this one. No, this is the real deal. This is actually, it, it's just actually got some intellect involved in it. Of course, That's I'm involved. That's in it. true. It is the brainchild of one Kevin Nash, X Division legend. <coughs> you now, they say Jerry Lynn's the pioneer of the X Division. I broke that kid in. 61, Mexico City. Wow, that means you're old. I know. You, you and El Santo and Huracan Ramirez, I, I know. I've heard this story before. I'm not going to go into it then. Ladies and gentlemen, this elimination matchup, this five-way, is step one, phase one of Kevin Nash's PCS, the Paparazzi Championship Series, starting tonight. And then every week on Impact, over the course of the next several weeks, there will be a different competition to allow these X Division stars to prove who's best. There's going to be a point system, I understand. That's right, much like the old superstars that was on... Uh, ABC. Yeah, I remember that. Kyle Rose Jr. Yeah. Bob Sacrum, I remember it well. Lou Ferrigno. What about Jay Lethal, however, in terms of the Superstars competition? Well, I hope he has a little bit better luck in the uh, swimming at, uh, episodes than uh, Joe Frazier does. But, uh... Wow, you almost drowned. <laughs> oh, what a memory. Oh. Oh. Well, let's get oh. serious here because let me tell you something. Oh, that burns, Kevin. Shake it off. Looking to you, Boy, pleading really, really to you. really showed concern there. Man. Shake it off. Rub a little dirt on it, I thought you were going to say. Tough love. There's going to be a scoring system for every phase of the PCS. It starts tonight with the elimination matchup, and pretty simple. Five points go to the winner, and then four, three, two, one, depending on when and where you're eliminated. And this point system will be every week as we True. do different styles of competition. Can you give us any idea what we got coming up? Uh, if I was to tell you guys, for instance, they're going to hit a bucket of balls and see who hit the furthest these guys will go on, that's all they do. So I want this to be absolutely on, a, on a, just a, a fair basis, who's the best that day? Not with any kind of, you know. Alex Shelley, nice shot there with the kind of the double foot stop on the forehead right there of Jay Lethal. I have to ask you about this competition between Alex Shelley and the man who just tagged in, Austin Starr. Pretty obvious that you were in the corner of Alex Shelley for months. It was like he was your hand picked, he was your hand chosen guy. Saw you jump off the bandwagon at Bound for Glory in Detroit. You jumped on the Austin Star Express in a hurry. I haven't jumped off of anything. But we got to get your comments about on impact and what impact that was with that kick lethal to cover. Barely a one count on Star. Recently on impact, Shelly and Star were a tag team, yet Austin Star used the paparazzi video camera to rat out his own tag team partner, Alex Shelly. I mean, you know, this is paparazzi productions. I mean, you know, we believe in a fair playing field. We don't go for this tomfoolery. There is no reason to cheat. Everything should be on the up and up. That's the only way that this athletic competition can actually 
gauge what kind of athletes we have. So you're behind Austin Starr teaching oh, the lesson absolutely. now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. Well, they're working together real good right oh. here, right now. And somehow I don't remember you ratting out Scott Hall when you were a tag team. I did. They just never aired it. Okay. Must have been edited out. Yeah. That live show. That was just to the police. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Alex Shelley in control here of Sanjay Dutt. Five-way X Division. Yes, it's an elimination matchup. So as soon as you're pinned, as soon as you submit, you head to the back. Even the first person that gets eliminated is going to snag a point here. Well done, Mike. See you're catching on. Check out this double team. Oh, Dutt nice and shot Lethal. By lethal. Oh, oh, face plants him and he kicks him right in the face. These two. X Division stars that have been working as a tag team, pretty effective here against Alex Shelley, even though this match is every man for himself. Sanjay Dutt just amazes me with how fast he is out there and, and the speed. Stan is all. Oh, yeah. oh, I know on. the accusations, but come on, look at him. The guy doesn't weigh 150 pounds. He probably weigh 114 without the gas. He's so quick, yeah. so good. One we, day we know, he'll be a next it. division champ. Yeah, sure it's like, funny, he's got his shoulder all taped up. Wonder what that's from. Uh, I don't know, maybe gas? Maybe tearing something? Oh, man! Austin Starr helps out Shelly. Oh, and he just rubs him oh, on yeah. the ropes, and that's got to hurt! Talk about getting wow. rubbed the wrong way, huh? Whoa! <laughs> Jeez. That's a rope burn for you. Let's see if Shelly can follow up the advantage. Just takes his boot and puts it right across the throat, right across the windpipe of Sanjay Dutt. What do you think feels worse, that or a paper cut? We can see Cinchy, that, that stare looking on, and there he is as Alex Shelley got close enough. Now, here's a guy that just doesn't seem to have any. I don't think this guy gets it. Sense of humor at all, but it's all about focus. It's all about what he does in the ring. And look at that determination right there by Sense. He goes right at Sanjay Dutt. Quick shot with the elbow. Immediately goes for the pin. And then the knife bitch chop. Oh, you heard that one echo all throughout the impact zone. The contact made with that open hand of Sense. Tell him to the chest of Sanjay once again. It seems like he had tunnel vision when you were testing him. The psychological testing on impact this week, everything came up warrior, didn't it? Uh, wow. Yeah. I think he needs to shake the ropes a little bit. There he is right here. Maybe wear, maybe wear tassels on his arms. Wait a minute, here comes oh, oh, he got cut geez, off by Austin unbelievable. Star. That just absolutely cut him down, and then he kicks Cinchy as he tries to get back in. What a great move by Star with the drop kick. You're right, Don. The second that Cinchy got back up on the apron, Wait, and now you see the tag made by it's every man for himself here. You can do that. Oh, you can see again the friction starting. And Austin Star feels like he stole oh, the stuff. Oh, geez, you guys. Ah, right in between them, the suicide dive by Lethal on Senshi. Some paparazzi looks a little out of it. It looks to me like uh, you need to be counseling these guys. Well, here they are together. They're going to come there. Oh, Star oh. goes through, and Alex Shelley stays in the ring. Did you see that? Shelley put on the brakes. Suicide dive by Star connects, and as he turns around, Sanjay Dutt's ready. Series of right hands rocks him. Shots to the side of the head. Fires him off into the corner. Going to take him up to his shoulder, and oh, in mid-move, the DDT by Dutt. Here's one, one two, here's two. Got no. it. Got it. No, he didn't. Oh. No. Wow, Alex Shelley just in time getting the shoulder up right there. You guys see the similarity between Star's style of work and mine? It's, it's uncanny. Almost like mirror images, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, they, the yeah. They, they, they both start on two feet. That's about the only thing I can see. I mean, the whole diving thing that I used to do a lot and stuff. Hmm. Missed that. I must have missed those years. <laughs> I don't even think I saw you dive for a basketball. You deep. Actually, you probably saw me in the two-man synchronized uh, swimming back in the 68 Olympics where I took a silver. Don DeVoe, line two. Swing and a miss with that close oh, line oh, attempt. Nice. And Not then the Sanjay Dutt takes the knees out of Shelly, follows up with an Enzigiri, drilled him right in the back of the head. Oh, Sanjay Dutt showing that athleticism right there. But you see Alex Shelly fighting back with the elbow. Oh, man. Here he goes. And rolls Pulling right over. The neck. Camel clutch. Submission applied by Sanjay Dutt. Is Shelly going to tap? You can see right here who's going to will he be eliminated. Senshi wanting to get in there. And now you see Austin Starr pulling up over to the middle. Again, Austin Starr does and not come.
come wow. to the aid of Alex Shelley. So then Shelley couldn't get a rope break. She Shelley still gets a point, though. Yeah, he gets one point out of five, best of five. What's going on here? Wow. One's better than none. Yeah, it's this competition to try and prove to Kevin Nash that they're the best between Alex Shelley and Austin Starr that rears its ugly head again. Keep in mind, you're going for five points to start this competition off. You win five, then four, then three, two, and Alex Shelley, who just got one. Good effort, though. Good effort on Shelley's part. You're giving him the thumbs up as he heads up the entrance ramp here. Well, somebody's got to be the first one. Austin Starr sold him out again. That's Star twice still now. There, right? Austin, Austin Starr sold him out. You see how quick Nash? Good effort. That just goes to show you how important this is. Two guys that love each other like brothers are cutting each other's throats because they know this is the, this is it. It doesn't get oh. bigger than this. Oh, nice combination by Danny. <laughs> She eliminates Lethal, who gets two points in the ongoing PCS, the Paparazzi Championship Series. I want to be, want to be, uh, easy for me to say. I want to be let know that uh, we're not paying for that uh, MRI on Lethal, on that spleen rupture. Oh, oh, really? So in other words, you're going to put your, your name on this with the PCS, but when it comes to Look providing any support, none at all. Check this out. Oh! Oh! Turn him inside out. Man, I'll tell you something. He, Cynthia, we don't talk about it enough. He can beat you so many ways with his feet. I mean, they come out of nowhere. He kicks you with that Oriental style, and he just absolutely is phenomenal how he can, his feet are such an extension of the body. The man from TV land, Austin oh, Starr, oh. with the pendulum elbow drop. Gonna One, roll him over. Two, Ten. No. Nope. Austin Starr, though, really showing some good stuff here right now. That, that pendulum elbow right there, just it hits with such force. Elevation. Big elevation. Goes airborne, drops the elbow, follow cover, and another near fall. Here, another two count on Sanjay Dutt. I guess it doesn't do much for your endurance, the steroids. One thing about Sanjay Dutt, he's been in that ring an awful long time, and it's starting to wear on him, it looks like, as Austin Star right there taps into Cinchy to give himself a break. It's really a good move. Stay out of it, and you can keep continuing on and get points. Survive, right? That's, That's right. what this matchup is about. Off the well, slam, another two. pin attempt here. Cinchy on Dutt. Sanjay Dutt on the receiving end of several near falls here, but time after time, oh. he's been able to avoid the three count. Oh. You talked about those kicks. Look at him just drill him right in the chest in the oh. third time. You can see how red the chest of Sanjay Dutt is after those repeated, stiff, lethal, and legal kicks. One, two, no. Sanjay Dutt's got a heart, though. That ain't all. Jeez, he's insane. I'll tell you what, Cinchy, though, it just has such a, a unique style, and it just hits you so hard, you can feel it all the way here to the table. Cinchy, though, smart, getting Austin Starr back in, and now Cinchy gets to, to watch. Cinchy would be something if he became a little more serious. Got to put his game face on, yeah, is what bit. you're saying, huh? Yeah, he just doesn't look focused at all. That's one thing you can never accuse him of. He's always focused. I sense a little bit of frustration here by judging from the body language and the facial reactions of Austin Starr. I mean, time after time, both Starr and Sen Chi have had Sanjay Dutt on the verge of elimination, but Sanjay has that no-quit attitude. Yeah, chemical enhancement. Oh, he moves out of the way. It's that speed right there, and here he goes. Up high, and he hits up with the drop kick. Sanjay Dutt, I don't know where he pulled that from, but he's got arms. Springboard oh. drop kick, oh. and then he caught Sinchi, who was charging in, took care of him. Let's see if Sanjay can follow up here. Oh, man. You Just wonder where he pulled that out? Down. Yeah, you wonder where he pulled that out of. Probably a syringe. Oh, come on. Look at him. He's there doing he is. the he shook, he shook the, the ropes just for you. <laughs> Here's his Must jam. have heard you. He got it. I oh. never saw Hellwig do that. One, no. two. Oh, well, is Austin Starr able to get out of it? Now he's got the camel clutch oh, right there. Come on, Austin. Well, it worked earlier with the camel clutch providing the submission win. The tap out that eliminated Alex Shelley. Going to try and take care of Austin Starr here. Well, Sinchi, I'm not sure why he came in and made that save. There must be something behind that, but he did. He just, I think, was just was dying to get in there so bad he wanted to flick some pain and it may cost him. Whoa, look at the screen. Oh, what a shot by Sante. Turns it around in midair. Oh, man, he just missed that move. Star able to roll out of the way, measuring now. Caught him with a perfectly placed boot. A shot right to the knee. Going to try and take him up here. Sanjay trying to fight him off, and 
able to land now on his feet. Shove him off right into Sanchi, who hits the floor. Roll up, Sanjay. Two count on Austin Star. Oh, he's, look at this. He's pulling him over. He's coming again. Two, no. Oh. Couldn't hold it. Oh, kicks dead on in the face. Left himself wide open. Oh! Who wants three? Who wants four? Brain Buster. Gonna go to the top. Could be the 450. No way. Look out! No! Oh! oh. Beautiful. I got goosebumps. I'm like watching my. It's like watching myself out there. Four, Gotta see that 50, again. Off the top by Austin Star in the process. Oh, oh there you put see some it. black leather pants on that guy. It's me. He stays alive in this matchup. Three points for Sanjay Dutt. Now it boils down to Senchi and Austin Star. Gonna find out who wins this PCS Stage One Elimination Match. Who gets five points and who gets four. Oh, he spins, misses, and look at that. Oh, what unbelievable agility by Sid G. Ten, One, two, two. Oh, got yes. it. Yes, no. good job. Oh, gutsy. My boy is doing well. Gutsy, courageous, able to kick out there. Going to take him up for the crusher here. Star fighting it for everything he's got. Wait a minute. Oh, what a oh, man. He just put him on his head. Dropped him down with the crucifix. Right back here to the offense goes Star. Sinchi. Oh. oh, man. You're not going to find action like he's this anywhere again. else on the planet. Uh oh, got that right. He's going to channel Kevin Nash again, I guess, Wait, here and go 450. What? 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 what in the world? <laughs> the ongoing competition between these two to impress Kevin Nash sees Shelly come out. And the distraction oh. Oh. here, he missed the 450, rolls through. Oh, he's got it. Roll up. Two. Sinchi gets the win. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the first event of the PCS, Need your comments here on this I, competition. I every week, these two guys. I, it's unbelievable. Oh, what, was that, what was that? Alex Kelly coming back over here. What was that? I'm going to try and get in the picture yeah, with you. Tonight, huh? Not tonight. Looks like I'm number one again, huh? High five. Number one. You got one point. I don't know about being number one. That's unbelievable. What? You guys need to work this out. You got four points. You got four points. What are you doing? Washing your hands in this thing? You need to work it out. I'm not going to. You're like an arsonist. You just stand back and light the fire and watch it. Then she stands tall, though, in the middle of the ring. To JB standing by with Eric Young. Go, Jeremy. Turning point with Eric Young and coming up. You see that limo earlier? Those two guys? Is that who I think it was? Hey, remember back in the day when they did that thing and it was cool? You remember back yeah, then? Yeah, you remember Eric, that? Eric, you got bigger fish to fry right now. The bikini contest is up next. And I don't know if you heard Miss Brooks earlier in the program, but she said she'd come out here and do anything to win this. She did? Yeah. Including uh getting naked. <sighs> I knew it. Hey, I'll tell you what though, you got the people behind you, Eric. You need to go out there, you need to be a man, and you need to win this bikini contest. You got something she doesn't have. You have the cojones. You have the cojones. The cojones. You're right, Jeremy Borash. It's time to man up. That's right. It's time to show the world what I am made of. I am man, hear me roar! Oh, God, no, 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 no. It's gonna go good. We, it's up next. I'm hosting this thing. I gotta go out there, and you need to... You need to... Put some on. It is kind of cold in here. It is kind of cold. Robert Rude wants his rematch with you. You get in here, right here, right now. Quick pin attempt. Two. Get it, he got it. He got it. Come out here every week. What up your body? These people don't love me. They love Eric Young! I bet you he could be in a freaking bikini contest! Eric Young, are you accepting my challenge? Yes or no? You know what? This is the start of my weight loss voyage, Letitia. I had a time. You know the average weight for a woman? 115 pounds. You don't want to know what I'm sitting at right now, sister. Here comes Miss Brooks around ringside. There you see Miss Brooks. And oh no, what we can't see, you can see Eric Young can see well. Look at those eyes, I mean. Holy cow, it's like a baby going over to be breastfed. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for the first ever TNA Intergender Bikini Contest. Introducing the participants. First of all, being accompanied to the ring tonight by Robert Roode. This is Miss Brooks. Like a baby going over to be breastfed? I'll get it out eventually. He <laughs> opened my mic. Well, he stole the eyes. I mean, man. He was, that's all you got is man? He was hungry. You were pretty talkative Thursday night uh, on Impact. I'm sorry, I just kind of came out. Cat got your tongue? Uh, well, you know, it, it is what it is. The CEO of Robert Roode Enterprises, and yes, that stands for Chief Executive of Fender. Ms. Brooks set for the bikini contest, the challenge that she laid down, finally accepted by Eric Young. You know, Eric, he's, he's afraid he's going to lose his job, so of course he accepted this bikini contest. How, how can he compete with that? With those? How can he compete with those? There may be only one thing and one reason. This is going to be a fans judging contest. Who knows? I mean, he's over with the fans. Introducing her opponent. He comes to us from an undisclosed location. This is Showtime, Eric Young. You ready for a TNA first? We are as well. How about this? The paranoid Pied Piper is in pink. Well, he's got to discover that feminine side of himself. Oh, that's it. If he's going to win. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Somebody is going to have to warn the paranoid Pink Pied Piper about the pyro. I mean, look at that look of confidence on his face. I mean, uh, yeah, confidence. He, you can see he's sweating from here, and I don't think it's because of the road. Man alive, this is, you talk about a mismatch. You can see here that he's not the most confident individual. It's almost at halfway down the ramp. He put on the brakes. He said no, but the fans, who have just been so supportive of Eric Young. They're, they trying, they're trying to convince him to head into the ring for this competition. Well, the fans have been behind Eric Young. They've adopted him here in the Impact Zone. We know that. As Eric Young, but I still, unless he's had some incredible surgery and it doesn't look like it from here, there's no way <laughs> Wait, he has a, a minute. chance it's to win it. this bikini contest. It doesn't look like it. He's wearing a robe. Oh, well, I listen, buddy. He got x-ray vision? <laughs> no, I, I could see dimensions and lack thereof. I understand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for this contest, both participants will be given center stage. The winner of this showcase of skin, this <laughs> exhibition of exhibitionism, will be determined tonight solely by the response of the fans here in attendance tonight. So with that, let's get the bikini contest underway. Miss Brooks, you won the coin toss earlier backstage. You have elected to go first. Maestro, please hit the lights and let the bikini contest begin. She gets to go first. Won the coin flip. tongue-tied. I just watched the action, my friend. One of the perks tonight. Okay. The amply endowed Ms. Brooks. Very well said. Very well said. Very classy. What would be your estimate? Oh, come on, uh, come on. Give, uh, give, us, give us a shot here. Seriously, I I'm thinking 40 Ds. Really? Okay, 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 okay 40 Don. Ds. Don Tape Measure West. Well, I'm mean, checking in at 40 D. Maybe, maybe bigger. What? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Just, a, just, just, what is, just what is your opinion? Just an estimate. Ladies and gentlemen, she's participant number one, Miss Brooks. That's going to be, that's a tough competition. It, don't say it's going to be tough to beat. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to center stage participant number two. 
He doesn't seem all that popular. Man, they love him, they? don't they? What could he possibly be wearing underneath that robe? I, you know what? I, might, I don't even I, know that I, I want to know. Might, I might just look away and let you tell me. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's like a train wreck, though. Uh, 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 oh. You see that goofy look on I his face? I can't look away. I want to look away. But I can't. Jeremy Borat's telling him that better he, he better disrobe. And here we go. Oh, <laughs> what on earth? No way! No way! Uh -huh. Hey, 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 no way! Can you do this? Stop it! Hey, hey, Eric Young! Hey, you're an idiot! You know that's not proper bikini attire! Slick Johnson, do your job! This is a disqualification! You want to make a joke out of this, Eric? You're not only disqualified, but I'll see to it that you're fired. Well, a title changes hands on a disqualification, doesn't it? Wait, wait. Robert wait. Rude. Hey, I wasn't done. You interrupted me. DJ, give me a beat. Please, don't, 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 don't. Not anymore. Go, go, Eric, go. go. What go the hell? Go with it. Okay, here we go. Oh, no. If you have small children, please ask them to leave the room right now. Hey, look, at, look at the level of confidence you can see. You can really see it in the face of Eric Young. Leave the room right now. Here we go. I implore you. Oh, what this spun, <laughs> spun, spun, square man. If, if you'd say so. They're saying that's not a bikini. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Referee Slick Johnson has ruled that because that is not a bikini, the winner of the bikini what? contest. What's going on Ladies here? Ladies and gentlemen, what? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. I want, I want one more try. Oh, no. One more try. Oh, no. One more try. Come on, one everybody. More try. Everybody. <laughs> Too bad Maestro, the crowd's not please. Into it. <laughs> Maestro, please. Oh, no, please. Again, small children, leave. Look at Slick Johnson. He's like an inspector. That makes me nervous. <laughs> oh, hey! What on earth? Four Spud Bob! Golly! And you can get these for Christmas. I think Don Harris turned the air conditioning on. <laughs> The first pay-per-view that Don Harris has turned the thermostat down. Oh, Robert Roo can't believe what he's seeing. He knows Eric Young has played to this crowd. All right, let's now take it to you, the fans in attendance here tonight. Fans, if you choose Miss Brooks as the winner, make some noise. Ooh, that's pretty loud. Booze and cheers, though, isn't it? Or, or maybe they're saying something else. Wish, Fans, we had, wish we had one of those if meters. If you the winner to be Showtime, Eric Young, make some noise! Holy cow! Well, it's close. The winner of the bikini contest, Showtime! Oh! Hey, hey! Robert Rue couldn't take it anymore! Yeah, because he got shown up again! He just can't stand that everything he's doing here is just backfiring! Yeah, temper tantrum time! Oh, come on, it was just the lighthearted contest! <laughs> oh, he's talking about rubbing in his face. Uh, no thank you. Oh, God. Wow. It's a first for TNA. Yeah. EY, Eric Young wins the bikini. Now what? Robert Roode wants a microphone? I guess he's going to bitch some more. Wait a minute! What? The crowd voted. What? Landslide. When I told you that Eric Young could beat you in a bikini contest, I was kidding. I didn't know. I thought you were You're sorry. Sorry doesn't put money in my pockets. Shut up. I am sick of you. I'm sick of Eric Young. 
and I'm sick of each and every one of these filthy morons in Orlando, Florida. And they love you too. Are oh, you sorry? Shut up! You want to make it up to me? All right, you're gonna make it up to me, and this is what you gotta do. Now listen up. You need to do whatever it takes to get Eric Young to sign a contract with Robert Root Incorporated. What? Well, I guess if you do can't you understand beat him, join what I'm him. saying? Anything you need to do to get him to sign the contract, because these people love Eric Young. Hey, listen, and when Eric Young comes to Robert Roode, Inc., they will love me. Good businessman, trying to get the rub. So listen up and listen good, Ms. Brooks. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You suck, you suck, you suck. If you don't get him to sign the contract, you may be the one who's fired. Whoa, a little pressure there on Ms. Brooks. He's just had it and he realizes if the people love Eric Young and he needs to bring Eric Young to Robert Rudy. Robert is not happy. If Ms. Brooks doesn't bring Eric Young to Team Rude, Robert might replace Ms. Brooks. To Leticia, standing by at the dumb to the extreme locker room. It outside the locker room of Michael Hickenbottom and Paul Levesque. They've been behind closed doors all day, and I can only imagine what they're talking about. Hey, guys, are you in there? Hey, baby! Hey, oh is Michael God. and Paul in there? Huh? I, are I they in there? In are there. they in there? Yeah. Hey, oh guys, come on, come on, guys, come in here. Come on, guys. Get come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, Come on, guys. 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 Come on, The Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, current X Division champion, a pioneer whose blood, sweat, and tears will forever be ingrained in the code that binds the X Division. Chris Sable, a high-flying warrior blinded by glory. He turned his head from the guidance of his former mentor, only to taste failure. You think disrespecting Christopher Daniels is going to get you somewhere? And now, he must battle for his redemption in the form of X Division Gold. Special guest referee, Jerry Lynn. Pioneer of the X Division, a man who has dedicated his career to creating the most elite division in professional wrestling today. And now, he will witness the turning point of his most gifted pupil. Will Chris Saban see the air of his ways? How's that for respect? Or will he continue down his path to self destruction? It is time for the first of two championship matchups. It's Christopher Daniels to defend against Chris Saban. X Division title is on the line. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is turning point. It is the X Division Championship matchup. Intriguing situation here, especially with Jerry Lynn as the referee. Let's break it down with the X Factor. Since Chris Saban captured the X title at Bound for Glory, the championship belt has gone from AJ Styles to the current title holder, Christopher Daniels, all since October. November the 30th on Impact, Saban defeated Sutton Lethal to become the number one contender. Tonight, he looks to regain the gold. The man who's been the center of X Division disrespect is the man wearing the striped shirt. Can Jerry Lynn ignore the verbal blast and call it down the middle? Ladies and gentlemen, Jenny, turning point continues with the following one fall contest for the X Division Championship. Introducing first the special referee, he is X Division Pioneer, Jerry Certainly not an exaggeration. When we started out, Don, four and a half plus years ago, the X Division, it was pioneered by this man, Jerry Lynn. There's no denying that. Oh, I'll never forget that four-way that Jerry Lynn was in that first day. Absolutely made me an incredible fan ever since. And the challenger in this contest is from Hill, Michigan, Chris Saban. This kid is 24 years old. He's been wrestling for six years. The last three plus here in TNA. 
three-time oh. X Division champion. He won it for the third time last month at Bound for Glory in his own hometown of Detroit. Chris Saban looks to become a four-time X Division title holder. The champ stands in his way. And his opponent from the City of Angels, he is the defending X Division champion, the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniel. I'm telling you, folks, this guy stands for everything a champion could stand for. Class, respect. Just the way he goes about his business on a daily basis, the professionalism that he shows, night in, night out, and Chris Saban would do well to emulate this man, emulate Christopher Daniels, because that is what a champion is supposed to be, Mike, today. No question, the fallen angel. He describes himself as the shining light, the saving grace, and yes, God's gift of professional wrestling. There you see the pioneer, Jerry Lynn, holding the gold. In the center of the ring, that's what's at stake. The prestige, the honor, and the glory of the X Division Championship belt. And you can see Saban, of course, this punk kid Saban, who Don, we respected for several years here in TNA, but just the lack of respect that he's shown people like Jerry Lynn, boy, it just causes you to turn on Saban in an instant. Mike, he's so good in the ring, too. That's what yes. gets you. He's so incredibly talented. He's got so much game. I, and. He knows it, and you can see he knows it, and it's gone to his head, he feels like the world owes him something. But you look at Christopher Daniels, he's had to work hard to get where he's at. He knows how hard he's worked. He respects people like Jerry Lynn. And don't be worried about Jerry Lynn pulling this down the middle. This is the guy that understands what the X Division's all about, and he'll make sure he just pulls it right down the line. He'll show no favoritism, even though you know he wants to just give old Saban a punch in the face every now and then. That's really going to be one of the interesting situations in this match. Did you see that? Usually you'll see out of a side headlock, maybe someone grabbed the hair. Obviously not going to do that with Daniels, so he just latched onto one of his ears. And he did it out of the sight of Jerry Lynn right there, but you see Christopher Daniels. Oh, what a nice elbow right there by Chris Saban, and then he pops himself up. Oh, you're right. Put the shoulder right into the chest of Daniels, the champ. Dropped him right down and goes right back to that side headlock. Well, in your mind, yes, Jerry Lynn is going to call it right down the middle. But I don't know. If in the back of my mind, I'm thinking how I've been totally dissed month after month by someone like Chris Saban. And even earlier, we heard it in the, in the uh, interview prior to this matchup, the knocks that Saban made on Jerry Lynn. Well, I think it sounds good on paper that Jerry Lynn's going to call it down the middle, but we'll find out. Well, we'll see what kind of professional he is. I mean, maybe it's a way of him showing Chris Saban what it's all about, but... You know, don't count Chris Saban out of this match. This guy's a two-time former X Division champion, and he's somebody, like I said, we talked about this guy carrying this belt for a long time and many times down the road. He's that good, and he uses his cockiness to his advantage. He knows it gets under people's skin. He knows it runs them the wrong way, and he uses it to his advantage. Nice series of arm drags by the champion, Daniels. I just love this. Takes it, gonna add a little bit of pressure behind that when Saban's face was right in the mat and then he takes him and drives him face first down into the canvas a couple of times, almost as if he's saying, that's for you, Jerry Lynn. Oh, look at that, one shot right after another. Just pounding his face into the mat and that's gonna get a little respect for you in a hurry. And look at Jerry Lynn saying, hey, I don't see any rules no. being broke there. None whatsoever. Right back to the offensive. Gonna shoot him off into the ropes. Swing and a miss with that back elbow. Oh, that kick didn't miss. That was right on target. And he, and he timed it so perfectly, Mike. How he throws him. Wait a minute. One, two. Oh, didn't get it. Yeah, barely even a two count, if that, before Saban able to power out from the count of Jerry Lynn, but watching this first pin attempt, I think it was the proper cadence by the referee. But I noticed that Chris Saban made sure he got that shoulder up quick. I don't think he wanted a chance. That's, that's Jerry a Lynn good might, point. Might whip through quickly, but he wasn't. Oh, there he goes. Man, he's so smooth. Split leg One, moonsault, pin, two. no. Yeah. Good cadence. Two count there as well. A near fall from special referee X Division pioneer Jerry Lynn with the X Division championship belt. It's just good to see Jerry Lynn in the ring again. I know, I, I mean, it's, it's not in the same form that we are watching Daniels and Saban, but man, a lot of memories come to mind when Jerry Lynn's in the ring. True. I mean, he's been working with TNA as part of the total nonstop action wrestling staff. I think this is great. You're right to have him back inside the six sides. Drop toe hold, surprises Daniels. Saban gonna measure him. Watch him springboard. Oh, what a drop kick to the back. It just sends Christopher Daniels out of the ring onto the concrete. And look at that. 
sneer. Yeah, and a little wink on the end too. How proud he is that he overpowered Daniels, caught him with that drop kick. Well, patronize me, Don. Oh, I'll patronize you. Whoa, 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 whoa man! Whoa, on the ramp. Hit toss takeover by the challenger Saban and the champ Daniels. Oh, bad, bad landing that time. Gonna run up the ramp here. Oh, it's gonna get some speed and momentum as Daniels right now is writhing in pain. Puts on the brakes and drops the fist right to the forehead of Daniels. Oh, right in the kiss. Oh, the whole right different means that he's using than, uh, of offense than he normally does. But what he is doing is applying a lot of pain and making sure that these blows count because he's hitting him with every own point behind him. I saw it in person when they came here by the broadcast table, and I think you can probably pick it up on your TV screen at home. You can see already the welts and marks. You can see one right there on the side of Chris Saban and Daniels as well on his back after taking that back. Bad landing on the entrance ramp. Well, so much at stake here. The exhibition title, Christopher Daniels, a man who's held that title. I believe this is his third title reign. Uh, like I said, he personifies exactly what the exhibition. Oh, right into the back of the head. As Daniels right now is still reeling, I think, from the hip toss that he got on the ramp, but he's not been able to shake it. And he's just going right to the neck in the back of the head, Mike. It was a good follow-up move by Saban. Connecting with that kick, rocking him further, scrambling the eggs of Christopher Daniels, but not able to gain the three count. The longer that this matchup goes, and I know Daniels is in incredible physical condition, but if you think about it, Don, for the past several months, Christopher Daniels has been competing primarily as a tag team wrestler with the phenomenal AJ Styles. I wonder if that's gonna affect him at all as the match continues and we go deeper into this bout. Watch the backslide attempt here out of the corner. One, Saban two. shoulders down, nope. Ah, but you can see Jerry Lynn keeping everything above board on the counts. No worries whatsoever, and Christopher Daniels again finds himself on the mat, and here it goes. Oh. Yeah, but at the same time, Lynn not showing any favoritism to either champ or challenger. Sense of frustration here on the part of Saban. Christopher Daniels holding the back of his neck and the back of his head, and look at Chris Saban going right for it. He saw him. He knows where he's hurt Christopher Daniels. He's not letting up. And he's doing it in an arrogant way, but that's just his way. And if you think about it, what better offense, what better game plan and strategy to employ for Chris Saban than to work on the, the neck, oh, the head of Daniels, because you know he's going to try and soften him up with a cradle shot. Oh, absolutely. And he knows if he can hit that, especially if he's injured like this. And again, he is just applying that pressure on the back of the neck, the back of the head, and... Christopher Daniels is in pain and totally discombobulated right now. Scoop in a mid-ring slam. Here comes Saban off the ropes and drops the leg this time to the head. You're right, totally working on the upper body, the head and neck of the champ and wearing him down and obviously getting ready to set him up for that cradle shot. The thing I like about Daniels is the multitude of different finishing moves that he can use. I mean, we've seen him, Don, use obviously the Angels' wings. It's probably his best known move. He can beat you, though, with the BME, oh, best the, moves all ever, the last rights, whatever it is that he uses. Oh, he's got such a repertoire in, in his arsenal. And I mean, that's what makes Christopher Daniels such a great champion. But let me tell you something. Chris Saban's another one. He's got that hesitation drop kick that he can put you out with. He's got the cradle shot. I mean, he, he's got ways to make you submit. I mean, the guy is such a great athlete. And that's the thing you want to root on. Oh, nice. Nice. Counter right there by Christopher Daniels, and that may be what he needs to get it back in his direction. Desperation move by Daniels, employing the STO judo move to take Saban down to the mat. Could this be the turning point for Daniels when it comes to him mounting an offense? He's still holding the back of that neck, though, the back of that head. And he's going to have to forget that somehow if he can, because Chris Saban's not going to forget it. So he's just got to keep going for his offense and not play defensive, Mike. A series of running clotheslines, missed the third one, but then connects on the high back body drop. Quickly, Saban to his feet. Daniels is ready. Tilt the world backbreaker two. leads to a pin oh. and a two count. So close. And there was a time I was really watching Jerry Lynn's count, and he has not wavered from the moment this match started. Here it comes, went for that double underhook. Usually means that the Angels' wings is the next move, and how many matches have we seen him win with that? Went for the baseball slide, Saban able to move out of the way. Quickly, Daniels! Oh, man! Wow, what force! 
what power in taking Saban back first into the unprotected steel safety rail. And again, Christopher Daniels cannot help but just a reflex action. Oh, but not look at that agility. He just hopped right up to the apron, comes into the six-sided oh, ring, oh, and then comes right through and connects with the kick. I think Saban was expecting a dive, but he was going to get out of the way. And then what did Daniels do? Grabbed onto the ropes and slid through like he was going through a slide and kicked him. It was just a beautiful move. Daniels from the middle rope, Saban's prone body. Laying oh, out the oh, 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 right on the concrete elbow. Unbelievable that had to hurt Daniels. I'm just, just going to say that. Did Saban. The champ gave up his own body. Here to connect with that elbow drop. Look at this. Oh, oh, watch the oh. Hits. oh man, that's the kind of champion oh. he is. He holds nothing back, but it hurt him just as bad as it caught his hip. You can see the landing. Absolutely no padding. The unprotected concrete as Daniels crashes down. Oh, I don't know how smart that move was. I, I, I don't think he realized how far Chris Saban was out. Be it. He was out past the mat, and once he was up in the air, there was nothing he could do to stop himself, and he went the, the course of least resistance, and he still hit that hip on the concrete. Ooh. Man, that hurts, and you can see him holding it there. Let's see if this pays off for Daniels, or maybe comes back to bite him. Saban oh. lands on his feet, and then a perfect place kick right into the gut, off the ropes with the drop kick, pin. One. Two. Two. Nope, had that near leg hook, but still not able to put Daniels away. Daniels is in trouble here, Mike. It's obvious Christopher Daniels is in bad trouble. The neck is hurting him, the hip. Chris Saban is going to be like a shark and still blood in the water here. Well, the complexion of this matchup has turned a full 180. It was the champ Daniels in the driver's seat in control, went high risk. Yes, he connected on the high risk move, but oh. maybe took himself out of this match and could cost himself the title right here. Chris Saban throws him into the ropes on the neck. He hits him in the back of the neck again. Yeah. And then he hits him with the DDT. And oh, that could be it. Tornado oh, DDT. One, two, two. No. How did he get out of that? Oh, I just love the agility, the spring that he gets when he comes off that middle rope. It's what you talked about earlier. You might, not, you, you might not like him when it comes to the disrespect no. he shows to Jerry Lynn, but you can't deny that he's one of the great competitors in the No Limits X Division. Oh, nice counter right there by Christopher Daniels. But every time Daniels hits a move like this, it costs him. He puts his body on the line every time because he's already injured. We know that. And he costs him every time he has to use full weight. But there's no quit in him, Mike. Saw it once again right there. Powerful, impactful move by Daniels. Hurt himself as well. Into the corner, that high knee right on target. Going to take him. Oh, man. Death Valley driver. Pin. Warren extended. Two. Three. Cross, no, two count. Chris Saban gets that shoulder up. And again, Jerry Lynn right down the line. You were right, that's what you predicted. Jerry Lynn would call this right down the middle. Look at Check this, he's got it. Submission hold applied. Jerry Lynn, the referee, gonna wait to see if Saban taps out. He's, he's close. Jerry Lynn wants to get all the way. He is so close. But look at the strength of Chris Saban as he's using his upper body to work his way back to the ropes and he gets his foot on it. Oh, you're right. He just made contact and just barely getting his foot on that bottom steel cable to get the rope break. What well, Daniels almost retained the title right there via submission. Well, I don't think Christopher Daniels had all of his strength. I think the injuries hurt him there because... Yeah, that's a good point. Chris Saban, I think, recognized it. Oh, boy, he got the foot in the face that time. Face wash style. Seen that from Samoa Joe in the past. Oh, you could just see Christopher Daniels as he's just trying. I, I, oh, but look at that. He set him up. Committed himself. That's what Saban did. And it cost him as Daniels connects. Open hand palm thrust that caught him right in the face. Oh, he just powers him down. And here we go. BME. There it is. Oh, he nails it perfectly. One, two, three. Got it. champion, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. We talked about it earlier. The champ can beat you in so many different ways. It wasn't the angel's wings. It wasn't the last right. It was the BME for the one, two, three. Best moonsault ever allows him to retain the gold. And that was one of the best moonsaults ever. And he hit that. I think you could feel that he knew he had to hit that perfectly. And, and he put it all on the line. He went for broke. If he missed it, if he couldn't put it through, 
I think he might have used all of his energy, but you can see right now, Jerry Lynn. What you know, what, you know what's going on here? Jerry Lynn trying to make a motion. He's asking for a microphone here, so I'm going to let him explain Raven, here what's going on. Don't make me go through this again. I will be the first one to admit and give you credit when you've had a hell of a match. Now tonight, Daniels was the better man. What a match it was. What the competition of the X Division is all about. Now why don't you be a man and lose with some dignity and shake the man's hand? Come on, Saban. Show some respect. He said, I don't need the respect, I'm the champion. Well, Jerry Lynn's trying to prove a point right here. Because Daniel's Jer not letting it. Jerry Lynn has been here from the beginning. He knows what the X Division was built on. It was built, oh, oh my God. He just smacked Christopher Daniel. I think it just, he, he had this point he wanted to make, and Dan he didn't want Daniels interfering in. Oh, this is bizarre. The referees fill up the ring to get right in the face of Christopher Daniels. I'm anxious to see Chris Saban's expression after that. That's just bizarre. Wow. You can see him saying, you will respect me. He's saying that to Daniels. And I, I, I can see that. He got dressed out. Boy, I got to tell you, he's done. Well, uh, he was so close to proving his point, and I think it was a matter of, of Saban not, or, you know, Lynn not letting Saban have time, and I, Daniels just wanted that belt move know. away. I, I wasn't prepared for that at all. Referee Jerry Lynn slapping Daniels. I mean, I mean, we, one thing we know is that Jerry Lynn is all about that mutual respect. I guess he felt that he didn't get it. So Great much matchups. more going on, Tell man. Tell everybody about it, DW. You've got America's Most Wanted. You've got the Latin American Exchange. And it's the flag match. It's about pride. It's about honor. And it's about country. Who's going to hoist the flag? Whose anthem's going to be sing? It's about the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. It's the triple threat three-way matchup ordered by Jim Cornette, the new champion of this. The two challengers, Christian Cage and Sting. And it's the rematch. It is the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle, and the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. You wanted it at the last time. You didn't get enough. Kurt Angle gave him this rematch, but he said one rematch and one rematch only, Mike. The graphic told the whole story. It is the rematch, the underline. On that note, let's bring him out. He is TNA Management's Jim Cornette. Ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, please welcome representing TNA Management, Mr. Jim Cornette. Great to see James E. as part of this TNA Turning Point pay-per-view. And this is going to be a special moment. TNA, absolutely the talk of the professional wrestling world, but even Thank more than that. Thank you for being a part of Turning Point here in TNA. Thank you very much. Cordette's going to tell us about the sports connection. And at connection. this time, I want to welcome some very special guests, some dignitaries here in the Impact Zone tonight that are also big TNA fans first. If I can bring to the ring big TNA fans from the Chicago White Sox, folks, please give a warm welcome to Dale Torborg and AJ Przinsky. Give him a hand. You gotta love this, AJ Przinsky. He was the man in 2005. Yes, the starting catcher and such an instrumental player in the World Series victory for the Chicago White Sox. He's joined by, well, AJ, good to see you. Dale Torborg, the Thank demon, you very much. former wrestler and a coach Been with the Sox. Been here since you were here at Turning Point last year. We're glad to have you back. And also, ladies and gentlemen, a very special guest. I'd like to introduce now from the World Series champion, St. Louis Cardinals. He was the 2006 MVP of the series. Please give a warm welcome, accompanied by his brother, Rick, to David Eckstein. Now, I know you're a big Chicago Cubs fan, but would you put this guy over? World Series MVP. You know what? I don't care if you're a sports fan, if you're a baseball fan, you love and respect this guy, David Eckstein, because he is what it's all about. He has heart, which reminds me of his book that's coming out the 12th of December. It's called Have Heart. It's an inspirational book for children by David Eckstein, and this guy personifies what heart's all about. You can get it at davidextine.com 
and it comes Very out the 12th of December. Very good to see you, David. The MVP Thank of you. the World Series. Rick, how are you doing? And David, I know that, uh, First of all, the TNA fans all across the country know you're a big TNA fan, but you got a very special reception from the St. Louis fans the night that you won that MVP trophy. Tell us a little about that. Yes, I was coming out after winning the MVP, came back to salute the fans, and all of a sudden the fans started chanting, TNA, TNA. <laughs> you imagine that at the World Series? He's such a TNA well, I know fan. you have a very special project you've been working on. As a matter of fact, we can get a shot of that with the camera. Uh, you've decided to give back to the TNA fans, to the baseball fans, especially the young fans. This is your new book, Have Heart, by David Eckstein. It's a very, very interesting story behind us. Tell us a little about it. Yes, the book is about, it's supposed to give a positive message to young kids if they believe in themselves that anything is possible. But also, it talks about my father and my oldest brother and two sisters who have all had kidney transplant, about organ, don organ donation. Organ donation, a very important cause, and we... That's awesome. <laughs> I tell you, you hear the fans, they are hot tonight. Some of the uh, favorite wrestlers that you have are in action tonight, including the rematch between Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. But I know you've got some other favorites in action tonight here on the program. Definitely. You know, as everybody knows, Rhino is one of my favorites. But then I also like the underdog type of person. And my favorite is Lance Hoyt. Lance Hoyt's been an up-and-comer. He's got a lot in common with you. What well, on earth? I tell you, David, it's great what's, to what's have you here, Rick. It's great to meet you. Torn boy, what the hell are you the, doing? What, they're, they're just disrespecting. Hold on a second here, Jim. Wait a minute. David, you're in my ring. It's one year ago tonight that we won this title. It's my ring. This is my TNA. You're a baseball player. Now you're writing books. You backed your way into a World Series. You backed your way into an MVP. The Tigers hadn't thrown those balls away. You guys wouldn't have won anything. We beat your tail in the season. Now you're writing books. You're no Dr. Seuss. What's next? A movie? Listen you to think Brzezinski. You are Rudy? Oh, Let's I can go. see why that, he's the most page. hated man in baseball. Look at this picture. That's what I think oh, you come know, on! Know. The disrespect. You can see David Eckstein's hey, brother Rick right hey, there. Hey, oh, oh no! Tormor just took a shot at Rick Eckstein. And look at this. He's got David Eckstein in a headlock right there, and he's going to hit him with this belt. This is just turned bad. And who's this? It is Big Lance Hoyt. And Big Lance Hoyt. He's got Tormor rocking. Series of shots. There goes the demon. Oh, 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 oh. boot. He nails Tormor straight up. Unbelievable. You heard next guy say it's one of his favorite wrestlers when he came to his rescue. What the hell did we just see here? Well, you see David Eckstein, his brother Rick, who's also a personal trainer out there. And this just turned ugly, and it was supposed to be a beautiful moment. Well, you weren't kidding. AJ Brzezinski, the most hated man in the major leagues. Right here. Oh, this is just unbelievable. Guy's got a book that uh, it talks about personal perseverance in his life. Wow, what a shocker. It's been that way all night. Get ready for AJ Styles and the War Machine Rhino. I, what the hell? He is the phenomenal AJ Styles. He is professional wrestling's most exciting athlete. But is he a man out for himself? What's behind this mistrust that you have? I don't know what you're talking about, mistrust. Because, honestly, it seems like to me that the guy wants something from me. The way I see it, Rhino wants to help you. Well, nobody comes around unless they want something. He is a man who has been there before. Over the last couple weeks, I've been trying to help you out. I don't want to see you go through what I just went through. Don't make the same mistakes that I've made. Don't go through what I've went through. The difference between me and you is I trust people. How is it that you and I keep ending up at the same place at the same time? How does that keep happening? You know what? I don't know, AJ. Well, let me tell you this. The next time it does, there's going to be trouble. You want to threaten me? Well, why don't you come out here right now and we'll see who has the problem? Now, two of professional wrestling's all-stars will collide for the first time. It's the phenomenal AJ Styles versus the War Machine Rhino at Turning Point. Up next to Turning Point, one-on-one. -on -one. AJ Styles and Rhino to the back. JB standing by with the war machine, Rhino. It's up next here at Turning Point, the phenomenal AJ Styles versus you, the war machine, Rhino. You know what? When I look at AJ, I see a lot of myself, the man that I was. AJ, you're selfish. 
See, I want to help you. You didn't live a privileged life, neither did I. But the difference between me and you is I allowed people in, people that are going to help me out, people that will be my friend. That's how it all started. I tried to help you out, AJ, but no. You want to handle things this way? That's fine with me. I'm not going to let you slide. And as a veteran, as a veteran, I will make you see it my way and that I'm here to help you. And if you don't agree with me, I swear to God, I will be some sense into you because that's how... Oh, oh. What has gotten into AJ Styles? AJ Styles just absolutely just wouldn't even let Rhino finish. He just attacks Rhino every chance he gets and doesn't give him a chance. Well, the cameraman was knocked down. We're going to try and get another camera in position to try and follow this action. The matchup is coming up next. It was scheduled next here at Turning Point. And you talk about a jump start. AJ Styles just attacked Rhino right in the middle of his interview. I mean, that's just not even what AJ Styles stands for, and it never has been, but he's been a whole different man. And it's just been unreal as we're trying to figure out what's going on right here. I understand, guys. I'm being told that we're trying to get a camera in position to try and find this. Okay, we're having technical problems with that camera. I'm being told that the brawl, that the fight continues in the back between AJ Styles and Rhino. Well, what happened was they knocked the camera in down and broke one camera. And now you can see they're still fighting outside. Listen to the crowd. Yeah, we've got an overflow crowd here. Oh, Rhino picked up that pipe, drilled him right in the gut with it. Can't blame him. Well, we knew this was going to be a fight, and I mean, it's just... The folks, we're just going to try to find one. We had to get another cameraman in position as they knocked one of them out. Oh, oh my gosh. He put him on that garbage can, and AJ Styles landed bad. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. Rhino with a front suplex on AJ and hung him out over the garbage can. Well, Rhino went through this with Christian Cage, so he doesn't have the history with AJ Styles, but he knows what it's like to lose a friend. And he saw AJ Styles doing the things that he was doing, and he wanted to try to warn him. And AJ Styles just doesn't want to listen to anything right now. He feels he's earned his way to where he is, and it's just... He just doesn't want any direction, but Rhino now, gonna it's become personal. Oh, man. man! He just took him and flung him right into the wall. This fight that started in the back during the Rhino interview with Jeremy Borat has spilled out, came through the backstage alley area, now out to the arena floor. And Rhino, did you see that punch? Just he's, he's using that strength advantage, and AJ Styles is just not prepared for it. When Rhino gets focused, there's nobody stronger. He's like a train, You're right, and man. AJ Styles just doesn't have a chance right there to that onslaught. Boy, I agree. There's nobody stronger, there's nobody more determined and more focused than the war machine Rhino. He feels he's got to beat the lesson in him, Mike. That's what he feels. You know, if he's not going to take it any other way, then he's just going to beat it into him. And AJ Styles trying to fight back. And look at AJ, he talk about someone who has no quit. Oh, what a right by AJ. Well, we know that about AJ Styles in terms of being a great in-ring competitor. But, but this situation between these two is about a lot more than just the in-ring aspect of this. We've seen Rhino over the course of the past several months get in a situation with a man who was his best friend for over 10 years. I'm talking about Christian Cage. And when the war machine Rhino went to try and talk some sense into AJ Styles. That was one of the first things that he brought up. He said, I've been there before. I don't want to see this happening to you. But AJ Styles, almost like he doesn't have any friends and doesn't want any friends. Uh, you know, it's, I don't understand the direction AJ Styles has been taking. But I mean, he made him an enemy. And right now, it's it's beyond what Rhino tried to help him. There's no helping involved now. Yeah. yeah but they made it personal. And Rhino, like you said, you brought up that history with Christian. He's having flashbacks. And he doesn't want any part of AJ now. And you can tell it with the force he puts behind those blows. Yeah, this isn't about intervention. Unless you're talking about physical intervention on the part of the war machine Rhino. I think he's going to try and beat some sense into Styles. Well, he's doing it right now, and AJ had a nice comeback earlier. And AJ, you talk about somebody who, who's not afraid to stall. AJ rakes the eyes. Something you would have never seen AJ Styles do in the past. Never. Now, Styles. Oh, oh bust the wall. That's unbelievable. 
unbelievable. I mean, he's six foot two. He's 270 pounds. You fling him with that kind of power, strength, and authority. Yeah, you're gonna go right through the wooden wall, and that's what we just witnessed. Oh, AJ Styles, he's trying to get himself worked back up. He knows that was a powerful blow. He struck, and he goes right wow. back out of it, right on screen to that. Boy, that was a second holy bleep moment. Oh, oh, first man. again. I'll tell you what, AJ is on a mission. Whatever that mission is, we don't know. But it's on a mission, and right now, Rhino's in his way, and he's just not holding back. I can't believe I was turned this around, Mike. Boy, if there's any chance that we can get him directed toward the ring, I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh! Wow! He threw him up I, in mid -air. Did you Look see that AJ. elevation? He sent him down from the fans, and you can see the blood trickling from the nose of AJ Styles. He sent him airborne with a back body drop. He must have gone, what did you say, 10 feet? Oh, he flicked him up 10 feet, and this is just power right now. Pure, God, can we see that God again? Oh, man, if there's any chance. Let's look at this if we can. Watch how the extension. Holy God. cow! Oh, he lands on that arm and on the hip. Did you hear that? They finally rang the bell. <laughs> The match is now underway after watching a pure brawl for the better part of five minutes. This match has been underway for a long time. Good it's point. been underway for weeks. And this is just a culmination right now. And AJ somehow finds the strength to reverse right there. I think Rhino got a little bit confident. You can never think AJ's down and out, Mike. You never, especially everything that we've seen AJ Styles accomplish in TNA wrestling for the better part of five years. And Think of what he has done to the back of Rhino. He put him through the wall twice, and he just sent him with unbelievable force right into the corner turnbuckles. And you don't see Rhino wilt too often, but that's exactly what happened right there. AJ follows up, series of shots, big right hands. There goes Rhino again, back first into the corner. That time he flung him so hard that Styles even went down. Oh, he's still hurting. That hip is still hurting. That arm's still hurting from when he hit on that ramp. Where he goes for a pin. Oh, he doesn't get it as, as Rhino able to get out, but Rhino, you mentioned he got slammed into that wall twice, and they, you know, they're just going on adrenaline right now. They're going on emotion. These guys are gonna be feeling this tomorrow. I can promise you that. Fans here at Turning Point. Get him behind the war machine, Rhino. Let's see if he can mount a comeback. He's back up to that vertical base. There's that big kick. Oh, look at that That's athleticism, unreal. isn't unreal. it? Oh, what a drop kick, and it's hit perfectly. Professor, Men. he leveled him with that. The leg extension of Styles only matched by the contact that was made from the drop kick. He might have posed just a bit too much that time. You saw him take a victory lap around Rhino before he went for the three count. And that may be the difference between the two and the three. Oh, you can see, you can see a little bit of blood still trickling out of the nose of AJ. I mean, that, that came from one of them punches thrown by Rhino, I'm sure. And now you see, look at this, so he took a little too much time and Rhino able to get that shoulder in there. So, oh, 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 man. I tell you what. There's just no predicting what you're gonna see from this AJ Styles. Rhino up on that middle rope. Styles just tossed him down to the floor. Rhino right now, I right below him on the, and AJ I think was gonna go over the top and now he decides against it. That's exactly what was gonna happen right there. I think he was gonna try and slingshot himself over the top onto Rhino. It would be a good move for someone who's giving away in the neighborhood of about, what would you say, 40, 50 pounds here. Oh, this is a good move on his part. He goaded Rhino into getting back into the ring so he could take a couple more cheap shots. Now here he comes, slides through and Rhino's ready for it. Able to move out of the way and then come back and Styles just leaped over the guardrail so that he didn't crash and burn. AJ goes off the springboard. Oh, 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 man, he suplexed him right on top of him. The man right there, he better be lucky he landed on the map. The man or it'd be done for AJ Styles. Look at the strength of Rhino. Belly to belly move by Rhino on Styles. And you can see referee Andrew Thomas employing the count here. He's up to two while both men try and gather themselves. Both men try and regroup. Well, Rhino has taken a beating in this match. So is AJ. And, and AJ just took, well, you're right, both men have paid the physical price. They've paid the toll here. AJ Styles right now working himself back up, gets into the ring first as they both beat the count. 
But these guys, I mean, it's, you can see how slow they're moving out. AJ looking like he favored the knee a little bit. Oh, what a right right there by Rhino and another one. Mid-ring exchange, momentarily Rhino gets the better of it. This time it's Styles shot off into the corner, able to get the boot up as he came in. Close line missed. Oh, spine buster spine did bust. Man, he hits it with such force. Here it is. Two. Two. Nope. Uh, how, do you, how do you get your shoulder up after taking a shot like that? It amazes me, these guys what they can do and what they can, their bodies can be put through. Styles has always amazed us with his resilient in-ring attitude, but even amazes us more by his out-of-the-ring attitude as of late. Look, we, we know, AJ, you grew up poor in Gainesville, Georgia. Rhino even tried to talk to him about that. Talk to him on the same level. Styles would have none of it. It's a different side of Styles than we've seen in almost five years. Well, Rhino grew up there in 8 Mile, one of the worst parts of Michigan. Nice kick to the back of the head by AJ Styles. He wasn't going to get any sympathy from Rhino. Just hard work is how you get out of that, and they both did it. Saw just moments ago, AJ was going to go for the Styles clash, but might go back to it again. Oh, he throws it out! He hits the rail, and he caught his did knee! Did you see the landing? Yeah, he caught his knee bad. You're not kidding, he did. Oh, my gosh, folks, I, I'm sorry you had that, to see that. That was an unprotected move by Rhino. What else are you going to do at that point? He charges at you. You take him overhead. Yes, you toss him out to the floor. It's he's, he's calling the referee, Mike. He's calling the referee down here. This is... This could be very bad. He caught that knee. You're right. He's talking to the ref. He's telling the referee something, I think. You, see, you saw him make a sign, yeah, the referee. It, gonna need some help here from the back. Don, oh, you, you, I hate to see that. We saw it on the monitor, but from the angle that we're sitting at here at the table, you and I saw it live. We're, we can we can take a look at a replay of this, but I can tell you, Don and I saw this. We watched it live. We're gonna get the trainers out here. No, he, he's almost in tears. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Look this, at and oh! That's the landing he, we're talking oh, about. he caught that left leg, and I think he caught the leg right there on the corner of the mat, and he jammed his knee. It's his left knee, no question about it. Got the trainers who've come from the back to check on Styles. And you can almost understand this. Everything... He popped it, he said. I mean, you can understand here, referee Andrew Thomas telling Rhino to hold off for a second under the circumstances what has happened. Referees have come from the back, trainers as well. I don't know that he's going to be able to continue. No, and these things happen, folks. We see it all the time, every day in a wrestling ring. And, and you just, and that's, you know, they, these guys are great athletes and they're trained and they work hard. But a bad landing, and you can just see the look on AJ's face. I mean, I know that we've been bad mouthing Styles. Let me just see if I can finish. He said, Let me see if I can finish. And you see Rhino in there wanting him to continue on. You don't, Even you, Rhino's showing the concern. You just don't want to see something like this happen to any of the TNA athletes. AJ, no, he, he just buckled he just, down. He just went right down. All right, he just buckled down right there, folks. We'll uh, we see Andrew Thomas talking to him right here. We'll just keep everything updated as we go. See a conference here among the officials. I'm not sure what they can do at this point. Uh, I think AJ Styles are going to escort him out of here, to be honest. You see senior, referee Rudy senior Charles. official Rudy Charles. Talking to him right here today. Pins are right here in front of us. Oh, wait a minute, look at this! AJ Styles what? runs in! They were gonna call it! He just got a pin! AJ Styles! Unbelievable! I think they were gonna give the victory to Rhino! And he was faking the whole time! I can't believe he just did Look at that. this! Look at this on the rim! He's, he's dancing! He has everybody full back! I mean, I was so concerned! You were so concerned! And now you can see Rhino is kicked off, and he goes right after him. Get him, Rhino. Hook, line, and sinker. Everybody bought it. I bought it big time. I We're just getting ready stupid. to pull off the match, and we all got sucked in. Let's We're gonna see right here what happened. This. Yes. We're going to show what happened. As you can see there, they're saying it's over. And then AJ Styles and Rhino's back turn comes in and gets a quick roll up. Rhino had no defense for it. We all bit. Oh, man. Every one of us, including Rhino. And I hope that Rhino's going to get a little payback back there as well. Bottom line, AJ Styles, I guess at turning point, what can you say? He just outsmarted the war machine, Don. Wait a minute, I'm getting word now. We're going to send it to the back. Let's see what Letitia is up to. <laughs> excuse me. Hey, what? excuse me.
Excuse me, what? What? aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you know who I am. Who'd you expect, Dick Cheney? This TNA bunch wants to come to my building? I'll show them. <laughs> Where's the big fat oily guy? Where's my son-in-law? You mean the guy with the sledgehammer and the really yeah, big nose? Yeah, 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 you know who I'm talking about. What is that? This? This is a cock. Don't you know that I like cock? Didn't you see that sketch on TV? Uh, no, oh. I didn't see it. You didn't, huh? Well, guess what? You're fired! Only in TNA. What can you say about Turning Point? Controversial and unpredictable. I, I kind of needed that light moment <laughs> after being fooled by AJ Styles yeah. and again. Uh, folks, I, I mean, I, what an actor. I mean, the look on his face, we saw the, the action, the pop right there. Mike, it was, it was tough. I want to remind you that yet to come, tonight at Turning Point, it's going to be the flag challenge matchup. It's LAX and AMW. It's about time that these two teams settle the score once and for all. And I think it's only appropriate that it's a flag challenge match. Oh, I mean, it's going to be a unique type of, wait a minute, the crowd. Oh my gosh, they're right here fighting again. And as it stops, AJ Styles and Rhino. And look at this war, it just continues on. Oh, and I don't blame Rhino one bit. No and you way. know what? Hold these security guys back. Let them fight for God's sake. We got more to get to. And I mean, look at this. AJ Styles just goaded him, goaded him, and now look at it. It continues on. Look at the fire that he's showing on me. Rhino bit too. Rhino bit too, and you know he's mad. Well, I think it's safe to say that this baby isn't over. Oh. I don't think we've seen the last of these two, whether security gets in here and separates the two of them or not. Oh, you know this isn't over. Oh, Rhino's gonna want some major revenge. The new era of violence has arrived. No way! TNA, you're trying to screw us out of those titles. Remember one thing, we're American citizens. You're infringing on our constitutional rights. You talk about going over the line. They just went way over the line. I'm going to take something that's so sacred to every one of you, and I'm going to burn this flag to the ground. We are not about to let you guys get away with this. The battle lines have been drawn. You have something that we want, which is a Mexican flag. We got something you want, the American flag. Whoever wins the match gets their flag back, gets the hoister flag, and the other team has to listen to the national anthem. We don't know how they let people like you in our country, the good old U.S. of A. So at turning point, get ready to listen to the Mexican national anthem because our flag stands for honor and dignity, something this country knows nothing about. America's Most Wanted challenges the Latin American exchange in a flag match at Turning Point. The flag challenge is up next to Turning Point. Get ready for AMW against LAX to JB with the Latin American exchange. As we just saw in that video package, a lot of bad blood between these two teams. They are about to settle it once and for all up next here at Turning Point. Conan. The flag match is about honor. The winning team's national anthem will be played in victory. A.N.W. and Lucy Lou, you three hoes made a big mistake. You dare touch the Mexican flag. Tonight, America most wanted becomes America's least needed. Yo quiero que todos los latinos entiendan una cosa. Los que controlan aquí, los que mandan aquí, somos los latinos. You know, they talk about following the American dream. <laughs> what a joke that is, because you've got to be asleep to believe that one. But tonight, something's going to happen that's inevitable. See, soon everybody's going to be speaking Spanish. You don't believe me? What happens when you call anywhere nowadays? The first thing you hear is, press one for English. The second, oprime dos para español. And tonight! You're going to hear the Mexican National Anthem. You're going to stand up the impact zone, the whole United States. And you're going to pay attention and salute to a flag that stands for honor, dignity, and respect. Orale, arriba la raza. But todos Latinos stand up. LEX TV, clack, clack, boom, clack, clack. Up next at Turning Point, it's the flag challenge. Let's break it down with the rules for this matchup. AMW to face LAX, Conan's Latin American Exchange. Yes, against America's most wanted. Each team starts with their opponent's flag in their own corner. And then what you've got to do is you've got to capture your country's flag yeah, and bring it back to your side, but that's where that's it gets interesting. Key. Once you capture your country's flag, you've got to hang that flag using a ladder. 
And once you hang that, hang it up using the ladder, the winning team's national anthem will be played, and everyone will have to stand and listen to it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the next contest at Turning Point. It is a non-title flag match. Introducing team number one, accompanied to the ring by Gail Kim, Wildcat Chris Harris, Cowboy James Storm. They are America's Bruce Wanted. Quite simply, the best tag team in TNA history. It's the Tennessee Cowboy with the signature beer bottle in hand. It's the Wildcat Chris Harris. And it's that eye candy by the name of Gail Kim. Does it get much better than that? No, it doesn't. And that's a nice camera shot right there, too, buddy. But you're right. These guys have done so much. They have been synonymous with the tag team division here at TNN. And their opponents come company to the ring by Conan. They are the NWA World Tag Team Champions. Homicide and Hernandez, the Latin American and here they come, the militant thugs of TNA. As Conan will tell you, 24-7, 365, they are the militant thugs. They are Homicide, the big man Hernandez, and yes, led by the brain power of Conan himself. Here we go, AMW, they're not gonna wait for the bell. They jump-started this matchup, non-title flag match, and here we go. Well, I'll tell you, they didn't wait one second, and they can't because it's about honor and pride in country right here. And AMW, a team that we've been a little down on in the past, but they came up when it involved America. They come right after LAX, but LAX, again, you got to keep your eye on them because they are thugs. They are militants, and, man, do they know how to turn things around in their favor, and you see the strength of Hernandez right there as he gets slammed Storm into the rail. Ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, this matchup, it's not about pinfalls, it's not about submissions. The flags are already hung in place, high above the ring. There you see the United States flag, as Homicide is sent out to the apron by the southpaw, the Wildcat Chris Harris. Oh man, here comes Hernandez to dump Harris out to the floor. Oh, he just has so much strength right there. And you're gonna have to keep your eye, of course, on Conan. Look at this, look at the teamwork. Oh, wow, did you see that, Hernandez? Just spun homicide over the top, right on the top of the wall, Cat Chris Harris. Wait a minute, Hernandez telling Homicide to lift him up, to bring him up to his feet. No way. Here comes the freight train. Oh, nice super kick right there by Storm as he cuts oh, him whoa. off. Gail Kim hit up to the corner. Oh, moonsault. Oh. Wow. Gail Kim just hit the moonsault off of the top. Holy cow, she hurt herself in the process, but she knew she had to do something. She just put her body on the line for her team, for AMW. My God. Man. And now, right up above us here, we see James Storm, who connected with that super kick, gonna try and take down the U.S. flag, and Conan, we've seen it time after time, the interference from Conan stopped Storm from pulling down Old Glory. And I'll tell you the determination that Conan used, it's no secret that the guy's injured, and, and but when it comes to something like this, oh, he'll yeah. put his body on the line, and he got up there and he stopped Storm, but now look at Homicide Hernandez working together. They have an incredible chemistry. It, 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 you know, I don't like their ways, but I like the way they work together, I'm gonna tell you that. I tell you what, you mentioned putting your body on the line. We just saw that from Gail oh. Kim. I still can't get over that moonsault from the corner turnbuckle all the way to the floor. She had to do something and she had to do it fast. Did you see how quickly the camera couldn't even get in place? I mean, she climbed up that like a cat and then moonsault it high into the sky and right on top of Homicide. Advantage quickly turns to the Latin American exchange. Hernandez can employ a steel chair from outside. Meanwhile, Homicide has James Storm hung in the tree of woe. This isn't gonna be good for the Tennessee Cowboy. Steel chair positioned by Homicide directly in front of the face of Storm. This time, Harris, oh, spine buster to cut him off. Earlier, it was Storm who was watching Harris's back with the super kick. Well, you can't really fault uh, Homicide for bringing the chair in or, wow, Wildcat sleek shot it over the top rope. Takes out Hernandez, and that gives Storm a chance to get Homicide, man, the action. Look at that power slam. Oh, perfectly done by Storm. All of his body weight behind that mid-ring power slam on Homicide. One thing we're witnessing, Don, in the first couple of minutes of this flag challenge match, 
both of these teams, including Conan and Gail Kim, everybody's putting their body on the line because they realize the importance of this match. And think about it, there's no pins, there's no submission. So basically there are no rules when you think about it except the ones we gave you. You gotta capture your flag, the, the flag from the opponent's corner, you gotta get the ladder, you gotta hang it up. There's a there's like a, a tramp. A trapeze up on top where it hangs, and then oh. of the anthem, and look at that, and he throws him into the ladder. Harris with the back body drop on Hernandez, who caught the ladder on the way down. Hernandez, wow, look at the strength of Hernandez! Grabs him by the neck and flakes him, this is the strongest man I've ever seen! We've wow. said it from the moment he stepped into TNA. The strongest man in TNA. Sunset flip attempt here by Storm. Hernandez just overpowered him. Never saw that kick coming. No, James Storm, though, had to do it. Use his brain right there, and it was a smart move because he saw what Hernandez did to his partner, and you just can't afford to let him get a hold of you like that, but look at the teamwork. Yep. Homicide going up high, and Storm in no man's land. Oh, he sets him down. Oh, what an elbow drop, Mike. Don, we've said it from the second that they arrived in TNA. The in ring of the Latin American exchange with Conan behind them. It's a style that's unlike any other team that we've ever seen. We don't have to respect them for what their beliefs are, but boy, they can bring it inside the six sides. Oh, that's, it's like they just don't care. I mean, they, they, they don't care how they hurt you. Conan has them. Look at the homicide. One right after another hits them with a series of three of them. Little Eddie Guerrero tribute with those uh, three repeated suplex. The fans even chanting here, but Homicide, well, lets them know what they think about their chance. Gail Kim again, interjecting herself into this contest, hooking the leg of Homicide so he can't come off the top. He's got her by the hair. Well, just... I mean, if she's gonna put her body on the line with a boot stall, I mean, you gotta, you gotta go after her in the ring like that, but it was enough to get Chris Harris time to get up there. Pretty easy to see the strategy here for AFW is there's the superplex off the top. Harris connecting on Homicide. Man, Chris Harris just showed you why he was such a great champion. And he went right up there and he just put it on the line and Homicide took a major hit. Looks like Harris bleeding from the mouth here as Hernandez is going to position that flat, that ladder rather, in the middle of the ring. And now he's going to try and take his flag with nobody there to deny him. Oh, he's got a hold of it right here. That's the first part of this. You get a hold of that flag, and now he's just going to try to march right up that ladder. Undeterred, but you can see James Storm coming right up, and he sees it, and he's not going to allow it to happen. You're right, rung for rung. Storm going to try and counter Hernandez. Meanwhile, Homicide from down below has got Storm's leg and, and boot hooked, at least momentarily. Storm now going to go up to the top of the ladder. Look out! Oh, and then oh, he uses the momentum! Sunset flip off the ladder. He took a 300-pounder down from the ladder, crashing down. Check this out. Oh, look at that, and he caught that momentum, and he knew that if he could get that momentum, Hernandez straight couldn't stop it. God, it was almost like a power bomb the way he went down. Now that I look at it on the replay, wow. Wow, you saw that. Wildcat Harris grabs the, the flag, gives it back to Referee Earl Hebner tells him to put it up. Now Wildcat goes up top, and he's got the American flag. That's important. You've got to do that as the first step. Capture your own flag. Homicide going to try and cut off Harris. No, oh, he's got him by the leg right there. He knows that you got to stop him before he gets a chance to get to the ladder. That's actually been knocked down into the ropes, and now Homicide fighting up top. Look at the headbutts. Unreal. One to the shot of the head. And, oh, man, he just put it right on his face. You're not kidding. Cut him with the cutter variation off the ropes. Confidence level rising here in Homicide. LAX has got this turned around in their favor. Oh no! Here comes the killer. Gringo killer on the way. Boy, that's Watch. gonna be tough to do. Yeah. Wait a minute, Gail Kim. Up here there. she comes. Look at that nice drop kick by Gail Kim. Wow, she's an athlete. Could that turn the tide for America's Most Wanted? And I don't blame Gail Kim after watching everything that Conan has done to interfere in the LAX matches for month after month. Well, think about that border toss she took from Hernandez so long ago. She just had revenge on her mind from that point on. And you can see now she's getting it set up right there. It's Conan looking on. And he's got to be wondering, he's got to be thinking, he's got to do something. Gail Kim gonna take the ladder, got the ladder in place now, taking the flag down. Gail Kim's gonna hang it for AMW. Oh, look at Conan coming in, and you can see. Oh, he just Come waited. On. He waited till she got up there. Oh, 
man, the force! He slammed her with his hand! You're 100% right. He waited for her to go. Yes. Waited for her to climb the ladder so that she was easy pickings, so that he could just overpower and just toss her down. Oh, now, now you can see doing? jamming that flag way down in That's there. That's what it was. It's going to be harder to get. Now he's setting it back up. And now I think, wait a minute, here comes Petey Williams. Oh, yeah, the kid from Canada that's been in the middle of this entire situation. You'll remember when LAX tried to burn the fight, hit him with the destroyer, Petey. Petey was the one who wouldn't let it happen. No, the Hernandez freight train just derailed Petey Williams. God, what a clothesline. And Cone, oh, did you see Hernandez? Is that over the top Unbelievable. rope? Unbelievable, over the top rope, and it cost him as he's laying down in pain, and he nails James Storm. This crowd, look and see what we, we, this is unreal. If we don't see a replay on this. Wow, man. I'm going out to the truck. That's 300 pounds that just went flying over the top with a suicide dive. And look, look at this, you've got right now, Homicide, he's pulling the flag off so he can hang it up. You've got Wildcat, Chris Harris has got his flag. They know that all they gotta do is get it up there and attack oh, it. Homicide is just barely ahead, maybe by one rung here. Harris making his way slowly up there. Storm's got the beer bottle. They're both, They're both right on the on first top. of hanging the flag. Who's going to hang the flag first? They know that each other's there, but they're both trying it now. You can see they both realize, well, okay, they got part of it. Now they can get the other one down. That's the key. Then they can finish the job. You're right. The flag is hung, both flags, but from one side. Storm. Oh, score crack. Wait a minute. He smashed it with the bottle. It looked like Wildcat got it in his eye. Did you see that? The broken glass, it went right into the eyes of his own tag team partner. Oh it, my God! Oh, Chris it did. He cost him. He smashed the bottle, and Chris Harris is laying there holding his eyes. It's one of those moves, Don. That if you think about it, got it. Yeah, it looks good on paper. Well, I'll take the bottle and I'll break it over Homicide's head. But you never expect the shattered glass to go in your own partner's eyes. There's nobody to stop Hernandez right here. You can see he pulls down the American flag, and oh no, he's undeterred up top. Well, you're right. Everybody else has been laid out and left out. And now Hernandez is gonna hang the Mexican flag, and LAX is on the verge. Oh, it's, he's done it! They did it! He won! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the flag match, the American Extreme! I'm still concerned about Harris. Oh, he yes, LAX. Look at that! They got it there. She's looking in the eyes. He's right here in front of us on the floor. Gail Kim, Petey Williams coming over, referee Earl Hebner all checking on this on the condition of, of Chris Harris. You can see how it happens. I mean, he hit him with that bottle. And it just went flying. The glass went flying. I mean, you got to protect your eyesight. I mean, you're blinded. What else can you do? You see, look at that storm going over. I think he realizes. Oh, he's mad. I think he feels like. What the? Petey Williams trying to talk some sense into Storm over listen, there. Listen to Gail Kim screaming at Storm. Boy, I don't think, I don't know if James Storm knows what happened. I think he knows he hit him in the back of the head. I don't think Storm realizes he got glass what, in his what, what else does he have to see here? Gail Kim, let's listen to well, He's just angry. He's embarrassed. He got glass in his that was your fault. She said. Wow, James Storm now. He just, I'm I mean, thinking. I, can, I can sense the level of frustration from James Storm. You've just been beaten by LAX. You've just been, quite honestly, put in a situation here now where we're going to hear the Mexican national anthem. But I mean, you've got to think of the. Look, look, look at this. Storm, I think Storm's accusing him of not. James. You three just made history. This is the first time in the history of professional wrestling that a team representing the American side lost a flag match. That may be accurate. So now, have the decency to come up here and stand at attention. Yeah, that's right, you got no class. Hey, Don and Mike, you two always hiding behind the mic. You two corporate kiss asses, stand up, show some class, because we're going to play the Mexican national anthem. Orlando, you guys got no class, but nevertheless, you should stand up and respect this flag. Hit the Mexican national anthem. I'm going to say it right now. I don't respect him. I don't respect the Latin American exchange. But I'll do it out of respect for the country of Mexico. They won the match. They earned it. Oh, we'll stand for it. Well, the end. What a
Wow. That's a moment. One word cannot describe him. A ring cannot contain him. He is a natural-born killer driven by a relentless rage from within. Every match, a new level of confidence and power. Every victory, one step closer to the ultimate prize. Retribution will be paid in full. Joe is going to kill you. TNA Final Resolution. Live January 14th on pay-per-view. Not a good situation. Not a good situation. Not a good situation here. Sorry, 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 sorry. Hey. What's wrong? Is Chris Harris okay? What's wrong? Chris Harris okay? He quit. He quit like he always does. He's not hurt. That's an excuse, JV. That's an excuse. He let me down. He let America down. That's a disgrace to have that Mexican national anthem playing in TNA in America. You know what, Christopher Harris? You have till Thursday on Impact to apologize to me and every single American out there that had to put up with that crap. Storm. 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 Thursday. Storm. 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 All right, beat it. Let me decide Thursday on Impact, guys. Back to you. Unbelievable. Making their way to the ring, BG James, Pip James, they are the Voodoo Food Mafia! Well, we told you Thursday night on Impact that there was going to be the next really bad skit of Dumb to the Extreme. And something tells me. We're right it, in the middle we're, of it. We're at that moment here at Turning Point. Well, it looks like... Uh-huh. Uh Go ahead. Michael Higginbottom and Paul Levesque have made their way to the uh, impact zone. Sledge, Glad they could join us. Sledgehammer and all. Yeah. They look a little rough. Yes, the Voodoo Kin Mafia. I believe they've arrived at Turning Point, but unlike any VKM that we've seen to this point. Well, they've got the, uh, done a pretty good job of getting the mannerisms Let's down. See, that would be Levesque in yeah. the back. It would be Hickenbottom up front, wouldn't it? For those of you scoring at home. Well, we're gonna maybe get an explanation here. Ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions Watching at home via television, boys and girls, let's get ready to stop it! Now what? Buddy, we see so many things that, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't they usually wear green cheerleading outfits? It's okay. not bad, I mean, it's close, isn't it? Uh -huh. You gotta give them some credit. You got the spirit, DW? <laughs> I've got spirit, buddy. I don't know if these guys do. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a good laugh. I really did. <laughs> oh, just the power there that they invoke. It's incredible. Uh-oh. Is he tuning up the band? He's, he's ready. <laughs> Or some music of some sort. Oh, oh, whoa. I've got a better idea. Let's get ready for the fat Orly guy! Oh no. I'm sorry, that's where oh, I that's no. that no, I'm sorry, that's where I throw the flag. Oh man. Somebody call the replay. Check the replay. Oh good. Give me a ball. That's awful. That's just flat awful. That must be jelly, because jam don't shake like that. You told me about it four and a half years ago. What did I tell you? Dog, you will see things in this business, and that's something I never want to see. You will see things in this business that you will not believe. Yeah, I know. And Mike, the unbelievable has just taken I wasn't, place. I wasn't lying, was I? And believe it or not, this guy's lost weight. <laughs> How do you know what is he your, told me. What's he, your buddy? <laughs> oh, oh, this is awful. I think oh, you killed oh, that, him. That. A person shouldn't have to look at that. Oh my God! That's just way too many sit-ups right there. Got the music. Oh man! 
You see, sometimes in our business, people have trouble differentiating between parody and reality TV. Well, let us draw the line tonight. What you just saw was parody, and what's next is reality TV. Okay, we had a little fun. Now we're going to get serious. You see him pulling off the masks. You see, I ain't Paul Levesque. Surprise, surprise. It's BG James. And he damn sure ain't Michael Hickenbottom. Kip James. You see, I'm B. Jizzle, and he's Kip James. And by God, we're VKM. Becoming cult favorites. Voodoo Kin Mafia. That's what the initials stand for, among see, other things. At first, we were having a good time. You see, we took these parodies as just good humor. But apparently, somewhere along the lines, you had a drastic change of heart, Vinnie Mac. You see, at first, you, uh, a, a superior uh, member of your administration, as I like to call him, I refer to him as the offensive coordinator. You see, he said that Vince McMahon, you didn't give a damn what old Slick Willie and B. Jizzle were doing down there at TNA. But that's when the drastic change of heart came. You see, we caught wind that you wanted us to stop doing what we were doing. Well, that sounds a little familiar, don't it? Because that's the same damn thing we wanted. Now then, now then, maybe you can remember back when we were employed by you and you ordered us, you ordered us to drive to CNN Center and try to find billionaire Ted. Maybe you remember that one. I remember that one. Then you had us drive to a WCW house show on the back of a stinking uh, land of air surface missile I, that I think you bought illegally from the Iranians. We should actually look into that. <laughs> And then, magically, by a computer-generated airplane and some bullcrap smoke, you made us write WCW sucks right over the WCW headquarters. So, oh my God, if you're going to sue us for a parody, I guess this is the one to do it for. Wow, where's it going with this? Seems to be the consensus opinion. Vince McMahon, we were having a good time, and you came along as usual and spoiled all the fun. So this is where we get to talk about your big brass gajones you always like to brag about. You see, we're going to lay it all on the table. And we're going to issue right now what I'd like to call the million dollar challenge. What? Million dollar challenge? Let me reiterate, Vince McMahon, the million dollar challenge. What's this about? You see, you got nothing to lose for this one, Benny Mac. So we're really going to test how big they are. We offering you. We have got with the bean counters and the upper echelon here at Total Nonstop Action, and they know how we feel personally, and so by God, unlike you ever did, they're supporting us. Let's get back to the million dollar challenge. You see, Vince, we got a problem. You want us to stop? And we want you to stop. Every week, you are chopping at the very foundation of the dynasty, of the legacy that we were damn sure a major part of. So we have got a proposition that is legitimate and a proposition that you cannot refuse. You see, it don't matter if it's in your house. It don't matter if it's in our house. It don't matter if it's in the hot damn outhouse. We will put up one million dollars. One million dollars. These two son of a bitches right here versus your two boys anywhere. Wow, that's a challenge. No, 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 hit me with this one. 
You see, you see, this ain't, this ain't a damn wrestling match. Oh no, hell no. No angles, no spots, no finish. Just men versus you two pussies. And if you got what it takes, then by God, you bring that crap. Vince McMahon, let's see how big your balls are. You accept our challenge, or you prove to the world that you're a gutless piece of shit. Oh. He wasn't kidding. They had some fun, and it just turned serious. A million dollars worth of serious. We apologize for the language, folks. We apologize that you had to hear that. Tom Coe, you think you know some deep, dark secret in Abyss's past? Let me tell you a story about a little boy named Abyss. Have you done a background check on him? Because if you have, he's done something that would make your stomach turn. You know what? I've looked into his eyes. There's a human being inside there. There's a man inside there. Jim Mitchell just thinks he's an animal. You let Jim Mitchell lead you around like a little puppy dog. Is it because you're looking for something? Or is it because you want to be your own man? Is that what it is, Abyss? Or should I say, Chris? Sting, you're wasting your time. Like all men, my monster Abyss is an animal, just like you. So before you go trying to save souls, you hypocrite, I'd suggest that you start by saving your own. I should have been the one walking in a turning point as a number one contender, regardless of who walked out of Genesis, the world heavyweight champion. I'm gonna walk down a different road this time. I'm gonna go down the road that I said I was gonna go down. This is my protection. This is my way of saying, everybody back the hell up because you can't stop me from becoming the World Heavyweight Champion. It's meant to be, and it's gonna happen. Triple threat for the NWA World title up next to Turning Point. But first, let's hear from one of the challengers, Christian Cage with JB. Coming up next here at Turning Point, the NWA Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Christian Cage, you finally get that shot you've been asking for. However, to come away with the gold tonight, you gotta go through both Abyss and Sting. Like sands through the hourglass, so were the days of our lives. It's mildly entertaining, actually, this little soap opera between Sting and Abyss going on right now. Sting says, behind the mask, there's a man. Behind all the darkness, somewhere in there, there's a man. Well, Stinger, Stinger, you're not looking at it right, man. This isn't about saving lives. This isn't about saving souls. This is about what it's always been about. This is about me. This is about the biggest star in TNA history regaining something that I never lost. The NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And while you two Boy Scouts are too busy caught up in this little bad after school special you got going on, I never lost sight of that fact. And you want to talk about soap operas? Well, let's talk about a real life soap opera. A real life soap opera, Abyss. This man right here, Tomko, he knows your dirty little secret. Oh yeah. Do we want to say what it is? No, not really. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for you. It's embarrassing for us. It's embarrassing for Sting. It's embarrassing for TNA as a whole. It's not good. So let's just hope that we go out there and tonight, all the chips fall where they're supposed to fall, and Christian Cage walks out as the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Or else, we've got that little trump card. Sting, Abyss, remember this. You can't stop Christian Cage. You can only hope to contain me. And if you don't know, now you know. Back inside the arena at Turning Point. Yes, that million dollar challenge you heard earlier, it's legit, it's real. Again, we want to apologize for BG James getting carried away with his language. It's time for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship Triple Threat Matchup. Tale of the tape, 
We take a quick look at the numbers, check out the huge height and weight advantage for the new champion, Abyss. Obviously, Sting, sizable, experienced edge. On Thursday Night Impact, nothing settled in the Christian Cage Sting number one contenders match. Jim Cornette brainstorms the three-way. Sting snapped last month at Genesis. He fell into the trap of Mitchell, disqualified and lost the title. What a set of subplots. Tomko claims he knows Abyss from the past. Sting trying to influence Chris. James Mitchell refuses to give up control of his monster. Jeremy Borash. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is a triple threat match for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. When the bell rings, the man in charge, referee Andrew Thomas. Introducing, first of all, challenger number one. Standing outside the ring in the corner to my left. He weighed in this morning at 230 pounds and is accompanied to the ring by Tomko. This is Christian Cage. 
Introducing competitor number two. He comes to us from Venice Beach, California, and weighed in this morning at 242 pounds. This is Stay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, he is accompanied by James Mitchell and is the current reigning and defending NWA heavyweight champion of the world. He is the monster of pain. When I see James Mitchell smile like he just did, oh, check this out, Tomko and Abyss nose to nose, and we know that at least at some point in the past, according to Christian Cage, that their paths have crossed and that Tomko knows a secret about the past of the Monster Abyss to reflect back on Mitchell. I saw him with a look on his face that, yes, it, it exuded confidence. I saw the smile on his face, but I wonder if that maybe was masking his real thoughts at this point, because I believe down deep, Mitchell's got to be concerned that Abyss at least was listening to Sting. Great move right there on the part of Christian Cage. You know he was behind it, getting Tomko to get in the ring to try to rattle the monster a bit. Sting coming out like a bounce of fire. And think about this. Sting has reason to get after both these guys. Not just what has happened with him and Abyss here in the last few weeks, but Christian Cage, he'll never forget Christian Cage slamming that guitar into his head. That one time that cost him the world championship, he's never forgotten that. So Sting right now, I think, fighting two wars. And look at him, he is just going right after the offensive, right after the monster abyss. Mitchell at ringside, more demonstrative than ever. Continuing to try and control his monster abyss. Sting able to pull that top rope down, and six foot eight, 350 pounds of the NWA champion just went out to the arena floor. There goes Christian Cage. Wow, he tosses him so high up over the top rope. I think Abyss realized at the last second that he was going over the ropes and was able to land on his feet. But Christian Cage, no way when he went up that high. Look and wait at a this. minute, Sting going up top. Look out! And there he goes right on top of both of them. Right the, on top of both of them. The things that we have seen, Don, from Sting, especially a high-risk move like that, the cross-body block coming off the top turnbuckle and taking out two for the price of one. Christian Cage, Abyss both go down after Sting connects. I'm looking at Christian Cage right down here below me and it looked like maybe he caught his hand or something. Tomko. Oh, wait a minute. Tomko comes out of nowhere. The referee doesn't know it as they throw Sting into the rail right there, into the crowd. And uh, the referee never saw a thing as Tomko goes back over to his side. Of the ring. Oh! Right into the steel steps goes Sting. Couldn't put it better than what you did earlier. Tom Coe's here for one reason and for one reason only. He is here to ensure that Christian Cage gets that NWA World Heavyweight Championship belt back around his waist. Boy, Christian effective from the apron, but not so when he slingshots in and Abyss decks him with the clothesline. Think about this, there, there's got to be a lot of strategy involved here because you can't allow yourself to not be a part of the action and watch somebody else get pinned and take the championship. Abyss really has to worry about that. He is the champ, but if somehow Steve no, pins Christian or vice versa, he can lose that belt without losing this match. And that's something that James Mitchell is going to be preaching to him, I think, through the course of this. And all these guys have to be aware of that. You'll see a lot of people breaking up pins, I'm sure. The monster sandwiches Christian Cage in the corner against those turnbuckles. And we'll point it out once again, Don, you're right. In this matchup, it's not elimination style. It's first pin, it's first submission that leaves turning point with the NWA World Heavyweight title. As right now, you see Monster Abyss is just using that foot and forcing it right there on the top of Sting, and he knocks him back out of the ring. Sting's still reeling from that shot he took to the steel steps. Not able to get back into the action inside, and it's been Abyss and Christian right there. If you think about it, very smart strategy by the man who we always talk about having the tunnel vision. Abyss, and then Christian out of nowhere. Connect, Tornado DDT, One, lateral press. No. no.
going to talk about the great game plan of Abyss. Take Sting out of the equation so that you just have one opponent. Make it one on one. Sting tries to get involved once again. Christian Cage is going to try and put all of his weight right across the throat of Sting. Christian Cage right now with the decided advantage. He's got both guys reeling, both guys down, and Christian Cage bringing the boots right to the back of the head of the Monster Abyss. It's amazing the way that the tide has turned in this match on several occasions now. We saw Abyss look like he was totally in control. We saw Tombo give Christian Cage the edge, and out of nowhere, Christian connects with the DDT. It looks to me like he's back in the driver's seat, although Abyss gonna try and fight back. A series of shots to the rib cage. That's the way you take someone who's six foot eight. Back down to your size, drop kick to the knee, follow pin attempt. Look, Look at the that elevation strength. on that. Look at that strength, but a great game plan by Christian Cage. Chopping down the monster every chance he has. Cut down the legs. It's how you, you, you stop somebody that has that much of a height and weight advantage. And Christian Cage now applying the pressure, pulling on the ropes. Doing everything he can to take the air out of the Monster Abyss and take that oxygen out. I was just going to say, this is a second great strategy. And Tom Cope from outside, laying in those big right hands. Oh, and Christian Cage knew what was going on as he made sure the referee was over on the other side. And again, he, you know, and it is something, you brought it up. Christian Cage hasn't been pinned. He hasn't submitted to Tyson Abyss. You're right, no longer NWA World Heavyweight Champion. But no one has ever held the shoulders down for a three count. No one has ever in TNA made Christian Cage tap out. Series of knife edge chops to the chest. Didn't know if they were having much effect on Abyss. And as he goes for the gorilla press slam, Christian, very fortunately for him, lands on the apron on his feet. Oh, Abyss caught him. Grazing, glancing blow to the side of the head with the right hand. Sting now underneath. Look out for the tower of doom. Oh, man, Christian Cage takes the blood of that. What a shot of Sting comes out ahead. He saw the move and he waited his moment. He picked his spot and look at Sting now standing tall. Perfect move for Sting to turn it in his favor now. You're right, Christian taking by far the worst of it. Quick reversal. Sting shot off into the ropes, but he answers with a clothesline and down goes Abyss. Sting gonna try one more time out of the corner. Could be Stinger Splash. Gonna try and measure him, waiting for Abyss to get to his feet. Exactly what it was. Stinger Splash in the corner for the champ. Christian Cage, however, as Sting turns around, he starts to mount an offensive with the right hands, but they're having zero effect. He says, bring it on. Another Hit me one. again. Hit me again with that chop. Hit me with the right hand. And now he breaks him straight to the face. And look at Sting. He's just mentally getting himself prepared. And Christian Cage, I think, realizes it. And right now, it's not a good move. And there he splashes both of them in the corner. Stack them up. Both Christian Cage and Abyss. Scorpion on the way. Ah, oh, look at Christian with the eye rake. Perfect timing. You might not like the counter move, but it stopped the Scorpion Deathlock in what might have been a tap out for the first time. Wow, nice cutoff right there by Sting as he brings him back down. I mean, this is the world champion. Wow, Sting's heard of his Here's the pin, roll him up. One, one, two, oh, so close. Sting running clothesline. That's the way. Now you've got one opponent. Abyss out to the floor. Tomko outside, just put the boot right in the face of Abyss. And again, conveniently, Christian able to make sure the referee was looking at him. Unfriendly to him, there goes the unfriendlier, but he stops it right there. Scorpion, set it, turn him over. Don't oh. rape the eyes here, he's got him, and look at the positioning. Perfect, middle of the ring, dead center. Mitchell up on the apron. Wait a minute, Tomko, Tomko just came right here at the table. He took the championship belt of Abyss. He slid it into his man, Christian Cage. Christian's got the weapon in his hands. When Sting turns around, oh God, look out. Oh, Christian saw it at the last second. And look at this. And then he slings shots it right into the Monster Abyss. And the Monster Abyss not able to get back into the ring. And then look at that. Scorpion hit. Scorpion death drop One, after the catapult. Two. two. Oh, wait a minute. Tomko throws the referee out. He pulled him out. Tomko pulled referee Andrew Thomas out. Oh, he pulled him out with force. I'm looking at it right here in what front we, of me. What we talked about. He's here for one reason. He's here to ensure that Christian Cage gets the NWA title. And Tomko, this could be the difference maker. Look at the force that he's using right there. And now he's bringing the shots on Sting. One shot after the other. But I mean, he pulled that referee out with such force. We've got to get some kind of change going right here and get this.
back right as the referee is put out right in front of us, and there goes the Monster Abyss right after Tom Cole. Doing everything within his power to try and hold on to that NWA World's Heavyweight title in his first defense. The shots for Tom Cole, then turns around and levels Christian with that big clubbing blow. There goes wow. Tom Cole to the floor. Then a Monster Abyss just sent him right over the top of the rope right there. He was able to land on his feet, but you know he was taking that shot into the neck, and now look at the strength right here of the Monster Abyss. High overhead. Oh! Christian Cage sent flying by the champion. Abyss tosses him out to the concrete. And now Mitchell up on the apron. He just gave him the he just gave him the sign. He just gave him the doomsday. Oh, and, and look at this as he's pulling Sting up there. And now he's got control. So he's him off the ropes. He was gonna go for the black hole there, wasn't he? Oh, he's got him right now by the neck. This could be a choke slam. Got him goozled. Mitchell gonna go for the tax. Those thousands of tax that we've seen come into play on so many occasions. And if you recall, Sting actually going back first into the tax last month at Genesis. Oh, and it was a sight you didn't think you would see, but he picked the Sting up, slammed him into those tax. And now, and again, it looks like Abyss is conflicted right there. He's telling them to do it, and normally Abyss would do it with, with Immediately. Pleasure. You're right, immediately. He thought it over for a second, but you can't deny that he's going to take the tax out of the bag. Well, and again, James Mitchell always seems to get through whatever clouds cover his mind. James Mitchell's able to part him, and but he stopped momentarily. And, and now, oh, there it is. Yeah, Going to lay out the tax again, ladies and gentlemen. The referee has been taken out of play here. Oh, he took no a vicious hit into the concrete. Tom just picked him up with such force and threw him out. The referee Andrew Thomason, he is just out in front of the announce table right but here in front of us. Abyss. He's gonna, you know what he's gonna do here. Oh, he's gonna man. try and choke slam Sting into those, oh, those thousands and thousands of tacks. Sting went back first into the tacks. Last month at Genesis, could this be deja vu? You could see Sting talking to him. Sting's talking to him, I think, trying to get into his mind. Sting's trying to, and now here comes Christian, and oh, look at this! He goes ahead and grabs him! It doesn't matter! And Tom go able to still get in there and get the boot off! Oh, you're not kidding. Just when Christian Cage was headed for the tax, you're right, Tomko takes down the champion. Tomko slides in into the bottom rope again. Oh, no. Tomko measuring abyss! Oh, he oh. just slammed his foot on the back of his head! Right into the tax! Just slammed him, and then you see Sting come over and just level James Mitchell! But the Monster Abyss just got his face slammed into those thousands of times. Face first, Abyss goes, oh God, right into the tax. And look at Sting. He's saying, listen to me. It's almost as if, Don, he's, yes, he's getting into his head. Ah, oh, he won't listen to him. So he kicks him into the tax, and there he goes. Go for the Scorpion, but the steel chair shot from behind by Christian Cage stops any thought of that. Tomko going to take the referee, who's out, going to slide him in. I'm not sure whether he's going to even be able to count or, or see a tap out here. Oh, look at this. And now you see Christian going to go, I think, for the unprettier. And oh, wait a minute. He knocks Christian Black down. Black slam. Abyss cover with Christian out. One, two, two. Oh, wait a minute. They pull him out. He got it. He got the three count. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match is still NWA heavyweight champion of the world, the Monster. He was going for the black hole slam, and look at the head of the monster abyss after being put face first into the thumbtacks. He took Sting up for the black hole. Contact was made with Christian Cage. Christian was knocked out of the way, knocked to the side, and that enabled the monster abyss to get the one, two, three, and in spite of the condition he's in, to retain the NWA World's Heavyweight title. And you saw again, I think, the confliction going through the monster abyss as James Mitchell trying to come in there and share it with him. And Sting laid up down there as he got pinned. Again, doesn't get that championship. To the back, Jeremy Borash standing by with the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. We are just moments away from the matchup the world demanded to see one more time. Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, the rematch. Samoa Joe, last time we wrestled, I beat you. You were undefeated, and I beat your ass. No one ever made you tap out. Kurt Angle made you tap out. Now, win, lose, or draw tonight, this will be the last match I wrestle with you, Samojo. 
And make no mistake about it, after tonight, every wrestling fan in the world, every TNA wrestler, including you, Samoa Joe, is going to know who the better wrestler is. And that is real. It's damn real. Yeah. The reason why I gave Samoa Joe the rematch is because something happened to me about 12 years ago. I wrestled a man from Iran, and he beat me. And I knew I could beat him. I knew I, I had the chance to beat him, but I thought I'd never see him again. And what do you know, in the 1996 Olympics, in the finals, after four grueling matches, my fifth match was against him, the Iranian. His name was Abbas Jadidi. I could never forget that name. And I realized I was getting a second chance. And I, and I got redemption, I won. I won the Olympic gold medal. And when I won that medal, I realized if I wouldn't have got that second chance, I'd never be where I am today. Right here, a superstar in TNA. After I beat Samoa Joe, I realized this kid deserves a second chance. He was undefeated for 18 months. If anybody in this company deserves a second chance against the very best wrestler in the world, it's Samoa Joe. For 18 months, I gave my heart, my soul, I gave everything I had because I was the best. I was unbeatable. I was unstoppable. Nobody has ever made me bleed that badly twice. I've never had to compete against someone like that before. And you know what? I kind of underestimated Joe when I came in. I tortured him. I made him bleed. I made him hurt. His neck, I knew it's been broken. And I went after him. No remorse, no regret. I knew what I had to do. For that whole time, he stewed, he waited, he persevered, and I didn't pay attention to that. Is there a fear inside of me? Yeah. Am I gonna lose sleep over it? Yeah. You're damn right I am. This guy is a killer. I mean, this guy is one of the best wrestlers I've ever faced. I have never been pushed to my limits the way that Samoa Joe has pushed me. There's one thing that I grossly underestimated with Kurt Angle is his willingness to win. When I made Samoa Joe tap out, I could breathe. It wasn't happiness, it was relief. Kurt Angle took my reputation. Kurt Angle took all my hard work. In one fell swoop, with three taps on the mat, that all disappeared. This isn't a man who's desperate. This is a man who's angry and has the capability of beating and hurting anyone in the world. At Turning Point, no longer do I have 18 months on my back. No longer am I the top dog. No longer am I the number one man to beat in TNA. So am I gonna lose sleep? Am I gonna worry? Am I gonna look my daughter in the eye and think that maybe someday I might come back paralyzed, crippled? Yeah, I worry. He almost did it last time. And he has a chance again because I'm giving that chance. Ever since I've arrived here in TNA, I've been given one opportunity. From that one opportunity, I have destroyed everybody that's been in front of me. Kurt will be no different. Win, lose, or draw. This is my last match with Smojo. Up next at Turning Point, it is underlined the rematch. It's time for Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe 2. For 17 months, nearly a year and a half since arriving in TNA, no one pinned or forced Samoa Joe to submit. That was until last month at Genesis. The Olympic gold medalist did it. But when you heard Samoa Joe talk about that, he said, there is consolation in defeat. Think about it. Kurt Angle, Olympic gold medalist. Kurt Angle, a champion everywhere he's been. Kurt Angle, the fiercest competitor in professional wrestling. Joe asked for the rematch. He said, give me a rematch. Give the world a rematch. Kurt Angle, give yourself the satisfaction of a return bout. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for that rematch, that one and only rematch. It's time for Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, put the Roman numerals behind it, too. 
And you saw what Joe had to do the last few weeks to ensure this rematch. Kurt Angle told him, I want you to watch my back. Make sure that nothing happens to me. Kurt Angle looked into his heart. Kurt Angle looked into his past. And he remembered times that he remembered the time he won the Olympic gold medal. And that I think touched him. And he said to Joe, All right, you'll get that rematch. One rematch and one rematch only. And he got it here tonight at 34. the man in charge, TNA senior official, Mr. Rudy Charles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 235 pounds and comes to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist, this is Kurt Angle! And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my right. He weighed in this morning at 282 pounds and comes to us from the Isle of Samoa. He is the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. Those eyes will burn a hole right through you. You talk about intensity, you talk about a man on a mission, that's Samoa Joe. Well, I think back to Thursday night on Impact when we had that incredible all-star war and Samoa Joe thought that Kurt Angle was there to see to his back because he was there to watch his. And then when he got hit with that Olympic slam, I think that has just stuck with Samoa Joe. He's not forgotten it. And he's looking at a situation where he needs to win this for himself. You know, it's not about streaks anymore, Mike. We know that. It's about pride. And Joe needs this for himself. But when you're going up against maybe the greatest wrestler in the history of this business, it's almost an impossible task. Boy, I couldn't agree more. You're right. Winning streaks, they're out the window. Pride, honor, respect. Quite possibly the two best wrestlers in professional wrestling today. It's been a treat to see them, Don. It was great at Genesis. And we saw Kurt Angle here in the early going. He rushed Joe into the corner. He takes him back out to the middle of the ring. He uses a back heel trip to take him down and then a top wrist lock to keep him neutralized. It's Kurt Angle in control here in the opening minute. I got a chance to talk to Kurt Angle, and he told me that he's gonna be using his, his wrestling style that won in the Olympic gold medal a lot. 
because he said in this case it's something that Samoa Joe does not see very often and nobody can use it against him. And he's going to do everything he can to bring back that style. That's Matt Wrestling and you can see him going right there for the, leg, the single leg takedown and he's going to do what he can to beat Joe in a way that Joe's never seen before. And then turns him over with the half crab and oh, Samoa Joe quickly able to make his way to the ropes and get the break. Oh man, and then did you see that on the break? Did you see the kick from Angle? Oh, just a little love tap right there. Just a little, little alarm to let him know he's right here. Samoa Joe, so incredibly quick, so incredibly agile for a man of his size and his body frame. Kurt Angle, you felt it last month at Genesis. You've got to look out for the chops, the knees, the kicks. Samoa Joe's a great striker. How's that? You talk about a great striker. A stiff short arm clothesline that will it would it would it would rock anybody in professional wrestling and it just sent shivers up my spine and I'm sure it just rocked the hell out of angle. And look at these shots, punch after punch in the corner, and now putting the boot to the chest of Kurt Angle. He's Samo just, Samoa Joe has been unleashed. He's just going crazy right there. He saw an opportunity and and you know you heard Angle talk about that he knows there's a chance he can get paralyzed in this ring. And you've heard Joe talk about it. He said, yeah, I know he's had a broken neck and I'll go right after it. And he did right there, slamming him on the back of his head. And then he just kept going. And look at Joe, he's just not stopping. He's going in the body shots, head shots, anything that he can to take that momentum right off of Angle from the start. Couldn't agree more. You laid it out for everybody. Samoa Joe, he's physically taking it to Kurt Angle and working on the neck and head of Angle. He knows what he perceives wow. as a weakness, and the 280-plus pounder just lifted and elevated Angle over the top rope, and wow, Kurt I mean, Angle just crashed on the floor. I mean, look at that look in Joe's eyes. I mean, it's, it's almost it's not even a look of anger. It's a look of determination. It's a look of a mission that he's put himself in tonight. And you can see he's calculating everything that he does. It's a look that tells me that he wants retribution here, that he wants to gain a little bit of payback. And as much as Angle was in control in the opening minutes, Samoa Joe's toe is turning around, and look at Angle fight back with those shots, my God! And right over, and left, and then a European uppercut. Oh, you can see the look in Angle's eyes as he tries to get his focus back, and he hit Joe with some wicked rights right there. Oh, Kurt Angle just goes right over the top, right on top of Joe and levels him. Body at risk. You think Angle cares? Right over the top. Tells the cameraman to get out of his way and puts the boots to Samoa Joe. Puts it right into the side of Samoa Joe's head. And then he goes over here. Oh, man. He caught it right into the corner. Right into the corner of that steel step. And, and he hits him again. again right into the face. face Look at this. Slapping and shot after shot right into the face of Samoa Joe. Well, I mean, he's a little payback there when Joe just was just face brushing in right after another. And now look at Angle returning the favor. I mean, you can just feel the, you can just feel the intensity as this thing goes on. From both of these competitors, and what have we said, Don, since his arrival? There's no one that's more intense of a competitor in professional wrestling than Kurt Angle. At points during this matchup, we've seen that match by Samoa Joe. But now the complexion of the bout has turned in favor of the Olympic gold medalist. And Angle, you can see, he's prepared for this. He's waiting in the corner. He's allowing Samoa Joe to get back up to his feet, but just momentarily, because he slides through, connects with a kick, and Joe goes into the guardrail. Didn't quite get him with the full force, but he got him with the full force with that knee. And then you saw the run, and look at Joe! Fired himself up, screaming with every blow! I mean, Samoa Joe right now knows that when you get that momentum, you go right after it and you don't stop. Physicality unparalleled in professional wrestling. Seeing these two men just go at each other. Everything on the line here in this one and only rematch. Another uppercut in the corner. Angle gonna try and shoot the 280 pounder across and does. As he charges in, Joe's prepared, he's ready. Got the elbow up, but wow, Kurt Angle just met Samoa Joe and knocked him down like a big oak tree. I mean, he caught him right there in the neck, right there in the chin. And I mean, and you know what I like about this right now? He could be going for a pin. What he's doing, I think, is measuring up Joe. He wants to calculate it himself and then show Joe why he's considered the best. And look at that strength as he just suplexes him over. Off the suplex, here's the pin attempt. 
and barely a one count before Samoa Joe rolls the shoulder and again a one count from referee Rudy Charles. Angle gonna go back to the wrestling basics here and I think that's a smart strategy on his part. And you can see him squeezing on the ribs right now and I think he, he senses something with Joe right there as he's just pulling on the ribs, pulling hard and Joe trying to get loose of that grip and he puts his hand in the middle and look at this, he's rolled Joe over for him. look he's got his mat there and you can see Rudy Charles checking it out, it almost looks like we're watching an Olympic wrestling event right now. Submission hold applied, you see that Samoa Joe has that move keyed, he's got the key lock on Kurt Angle who rolls over now uses his weight against Samoa Joe and gets a near fall. Actually Samoa Joe's own arm was keeping Kurt Angle's shoulder from touching the mat right there. That was a wild situation and again you're watching Matt Wrestling right here and it's two guys just trying to show each other who's the better man. Samoa Joe, known for that ground and pound mixed martial arts style. He has such a wide variety of training methods. Traditional pro wrestling, that's a part of it as well, but also that MMA, that submission and ground game that he can bring that enables him, I think, to match Kurt Angle here, and it's exactly what we're seeing. Right hand after right hand, the right to the jaw, chop to the chest, here comes Joe. Oh, he missed his Kurt Angle. It looked wow. like he was going to be taking him, but then he set him up, and that's that experience that he has. I mean, at the last second, he dropped down, and Joe thought he was going to take Angle over the top. Did you see the way that Joe hit the ropes, and you see the mark on the arm, and I believe on the chest and neck of, of Samoa Joe. When he went into that steel cable, he had no idea it was coming. Like a whiplash gone when he went right in, as Angle was able to move out of the way and avoid the contact. You can see there, these guys are like, they're like heavyweight fighters as they talk to each other as they go. Joe now trying to get some steam. Look out! Oh, he just gets belly to belly right there by Kurt Angle. And man, Kurt Angle's got momentum rolling right now. Oh, the overhead release suplex by Angle, just what the doctor ordered. Great crowd here at Turning Point, showing their support for both of these men as Angle goes for the pin. Two count only before Joe rolls the shoulder. Kurt Angle almost went up two zip against Samoa Joe in one-on-one -on -one competition. And you can see now applying the knee to the back, gonna pull back on the neck. I mean, Kurt Angle just putting on a clinic right now. Samoa Joe has had some flurry. Samoa Joe has shown us some brilliance, some glimpses of brilliance, but right now you can see it, it looks like he's just losing the air. So different than that facial expression that we've seen. On Samoa Joe that, earlier. That was more than a chin lock from Kurt Angle, at least in the opinion of referee, senior official Rudy Charles. He felt that Angle had it down right across the throat of Samoa Joe that he was cutting off the air to Samoa Joe and it looked that way when we had that great camera shot, that close up in the ring. You can see there Kurt Angle also grinding the chin into the shoulder right there of, of Samoa Joe and that's just one of those things that you don't realize. You grind that chin in there hard and it just causes intense pain. I mean, that's the veteranship right there. That's all the years of experience of Kurt Angle. And let me tell you something. In Matt Wrestling, that's the kind of thing that you do to grind out your opponent. And when you have periods like that, and he's bringing out all the stops. Who better to know every trick of the trade than Kurt Angle? The series of elbow shots momentarily allows Joe to, to come back, but then Angle cuts him off, swinging a miss with the clothesline. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Look at the strength of Samoa Joe! And I don't know where he found that from! He didn't look like he had it! And he just shows you what kind of a competitor that he is! Released him overhead! What a suplex, guys! Can we take another look at this? In the truck, have we got a replay of this? There look. it is! Oh, and you can see Kurt Angle had a bad landing! I think he landed that on the knee, I think! I, I, I just... Just the intensity of the crowd, you can feel the... Electricity, they know they're watching something special. Samoa Joe dug deep for that suplex. He's slow to get back to his feet. They meet in mid-ring. Joe connects, blocks the punch from Angle. Joe connects again and blocks. That's three straight times. He blocked him and hit him with a shot to the ropes. Oh. Decked him with the clothesline. Angle to his feet, dropped him a second time. But look how quickly Angle gets right back up. What a competitor. That time, chest first into the corner. Choke oh, Joe's got him. Choke oh, him. what a headbutt right there by Angle. And after oh. that headbutt, there it is. He's got the German. He hit him with one German suplex. On the head again. He maintains his grip. He maintains the contact. 280 pounds overhead. Gonna go to the well for a third time. 
You can see Kurt Angle right there, and Joe looks like, oh, the man, he hits him. Samoa Joe, for every time he turns it around, it gets the momentum. The Olympic gold medal is able to turn it back in his favor. Angle challenges Joe to get back up to his feet and take more of a beating. Samoa Joe came so close to putting that rear naked choke on. I don't think he had it fully cinched in and applied before Angle butted him, and then Angle takes control. The three Germans, oh, it's gonna go there. Olympic slam, but instead the choke applied. Ankle lock, ankle lock. This is what he beat him with. Can he beat him a second time? Is Joe gonna tap? Again, Joe just didn't quite have the strength to turn it around, but then he does. Oh man, you know. Samoa Joe was just testing it. He waited to see if he could do the momentum, and then he breaks oh. the knee right up to the chin of Kurt Angle and sets him up with the top rope. But could, could Joe be getting this momentum back? Could it be the muscle buster that he's setting him up for? Oh, oh, that kick! How does he do that for a man that size? Angle never saw it coming. Is he going to feel this muscle buster? Oh, oh boy, there's no doubt. Oh, oh man, he's got it! One! Oh, oh man. man. Again, he's got off. the ankle lock. Submission applied. Look at the position. Dead center, middle of the ring. The place is going nuts because they're anticipating Samoa Joe to tap out a second time. The tuck and roll worked once. Can it work a second time? Or can Joe come up with something else? Look at how Angle gets to his base. Angle got to his feet. He doesn't want that to happen to him again. And now, you see, Joe, he Joe. said no. Joe said no. And again, he tries it. And it again, he's able to use his weight. And if he didn't have that weight advantage, I'm telling you, though, that's how smart Joe is. He knows that, and he uses it. Olympic slam. Oh, man, he just won one right after is. another. Here's one, one, two. Oh, he gets up just in time. And Angle can't believe it. I can't believe it. Angle thought he had him pinned. When Kurt Angle hits the Olympic slam, the one, two, three is what you grown to expect. But Samoa Joe stays alive. Listen to this crowd. They respect all the down Kurt Angle. Takes the strap off right there. And now he knows that he goes right back at that foot. Right back at the ankle lock. And he's just yanking on it right Why there. Wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you at this point? When it's been so successful for you in the past. When you beat Samoa Joe with it. Tuck and roll. This time is blocked by angle. Wait, look at this. Shoulders down. Oh, man. How's Samoa Joe able to get the reversal? And now look at him. As he puts in the cookie to There right it is. is. He's got the clutch. He's got the rear naked choke. Angle trying to fight through the pain. He's holding him right there. He's see. got his arm. He's going to tap. Oh, is he going to do it? Oh, God, what's he going to do? Oh, look at him. He's fighting it. He's fighting it. Stay right there. On the, there. Oh, man. Now the ankle lock applied. Joe. Oh. Kurt Angle turned it around. Samoa Joe's in trouble. Oh, Angle's he got him positioned perfectly. Now, this is what Angle was looking for. You can see Joe realizes he was so close. He'll never get that chance again. It's Kurt Angle again. You see Joe again fighting him. And There's now he's got it again. Kakina clutch, rear naked choke. What's he gonna do? He's holding his hand up. He's trying Is not he to tap. Do it? He's trying not to tap. No, he's holding with everything he's got. Kurt Angle. And now look at it, Kurt Angle's arm. And it looks like he's still He's, yeah, on, he's losing his air. He's on the verge here of oh. being unconscious. You see referee Rudy Charles checking to see if there's still some life in Angle. Look at Kurt Angle now. He's got it. He's, he's grabbed the ankle of Joe, and he fights back. Oh, my gosh. How was he able to stop it? And Angle. now again, he's got the ankle. Oh, no. Joe in trouble again. And now Angle sits down with the ankle lock, scissors the leg to cap it off. Pulling with everything that he's got. You can see the pain on Joe's face as he's fighting it. He's got to reach through the pain, and I don't think he can. Samoa Joe, he's still several feet away from the ropes. He's got a long way to go. Can he use his weight advantage? Can he use his size and strength to get to the ropes? He's not doing it. He stopped him. Kurt Angle's got him. Joe oh, no. digging down. Joe digging down so deep. Rudy Charles. Look at the determination as he gets a hold of the ropes. Oh my God, Samoa Joe. But and will Angle break it? Wow, on the verge of the five count from referee Charles there. He got all the way to four before Angle would relinquish control of the ankle lock. Oh, look at him go right at the ankle. He goes and stomps on it. He knows there's no feeling in that ankle. He knows there's no blood in that ankle. And that's why he goes right after it. 
truer words have never been chanted. You're damn right this is awesome. This is TNA. Angle, big shot. Rock Joe. Three right hands. Samojo precarious position. Up in the corner, turnbuckle. What's Angle going to position him for here? You don't often see Angle go. Uh -oh. No, no, so look suplex, at the strength. Suplex. He's getting Joe up top here. He's trying to belly to belly him from the middle rope, but Joe won't have anything to do with it. Oh, headbutt, headbutt, headbutt. Three headbutts in a row by Samoa Joe. And that fights Kurt Angle off right there. Right to the forehead and right across the bridge of the nose of Kurt Angle. Samoa Joe connects with those headbutts. But Joe up on top. Oh, look how close. Kurt Angle got up there so quick. And then nails him with the Here suplex. it is. One, two, it's over. No, no. Samoa Joe fights out of it. Wow. Both Angle and Samoa Joe trying to fight through what has been an incredible amount of pain that each man has felt in this so special rematch. It's Angle first up to his feet. Joe back up to the base. Here it comes, Olympic Slam. No, oh, look at this. Arm so bar instead. Arm drag off the Olympic Slam. Oh, Samoa Joe's so prepared but for he can, all of Angle's moves. But he can barely hold his weight on that foot after oh, Angle has been torquing it on it all night. And then you see referee Rudy Charles gets hit right there in the face. Hit right there in the eye. Unfortunate collision here. Angle and Joe collide. And then Angle knocks referee Rudy Charles down. Rudy Charles has been hit in the eye, and Samoa Joe applies oh, the Katina clutch. But there's no referee right here, as you can see, Samoa Joe, and he's oh, tapping Angle's out. Angle's tapping. He's tapping out, but the referee doesn't know. And, oh, man, Kurt Angle has tapped out. Can you believe this? And Samoa Joe, I think, is under the impression here that he's won the match. He knows he's won the match, but Rudy he's not officially won the match because the referee and Alvin at Joe. I think Joe realizes it now, that there, he doesn't hear a bell. So he knows that even though Angle tapped out, the referee didn't see it. Oh, low blow right there by Kurt Angle. Oh, he shot him right from behind. What was that? Never expected to see that from Kurt Angle. Not after the great mess that these guys have had. You don't need to do a cheap shot like that. Short cut by Angle. The low blow. And wait a minute. Angle headed over here to the broadcast position. What's going on? I have no idea. Goes past us. Oh. He's got a steel chair that he took from the timekeeper from the bell ringer. I think he's mad that he tapped out. He knows that he hasn't officially lost, but he knows he tapped out. I think you're and right. And he's angry. And he's mad. And he's going to take it out on Samoa Joe. Oh, but he missed it. Oh, and the chair foot came back. It sprung back right into Angle's face. Joe's got him hooked around the trunks. He's trying to grab those straps, and there then he pulls is. him in. Got him in again. He's got him in. Rear naked choke. Is he going to tap a second time? He's holding on for dear life. And you can see referee Rudy Charles. It's Kurt Angle going to tap out. Now he grabs the ankle again. Oh, and he pulls it back. Joe trying to get it into place. Look at him. And he taps out. Joe's won. You and I have done this for nearly five years, big boy. You ever seen anything like that? So different than any other match you'll watch. So different than any other match you'll call. Two warriors just putting it all on the line. Who's the better man? And it looked like it was Angle. It looked like it was Joe. And it went back and forth. And then Samoa Joe able to finally get him to tap out. With the referee seeing it, and he's now won the rematch. Think about it. Head-to-head -head competition, Don. Kurt Angle won. Samoa Joe won. And it looks to me, the signs that I see around ringside here, the fans holding up the rematch signs. Well, we heard Angle, though. He said he it said. was the one and only. This was the one and only. But Kurt Angle can't believe it. And you saw a different side of Kurt after he tapped that first time. When he hits the low blow, then he went for the chair to try to injure Joe, to try to end Joe, really put a damper on his career, and now Kurt Angle has to face the step that there are people just as good as he is. Frustration so evident as Kurt Angle pounds the canvas in the middle of the ring. We are going to go back and we are going to relive so many of the special moments of this incredible rematch. You could see there the beginning that when these guys entered into the ring, 
and the big time feel. And what a shot it was at the beginning when Samoa Joe took Angle out of the ring. Physicality unlike anything that we've ever seen. The vicious shots by Joe answered by the array of suplexes from the Olympic gold medalist. But Samoa Joe had suplexes in his repertoire as well. I mean, you just saw the back and forth. It was unreal. Kurt Angle would have the momentum. Samoa Joe would look at this when he did this series of the German suplexes, one right after another. And you can see Samoa Joe just knowing he's going to get hit another time, but he couldn't fight it off. And then the ankle lock. The series of submissions between the two, the repeated attempts at the ankle lock by Angle. We thought that Angle would, would beat Samoa Joe. He had him positioned so many times perfectly. But Samoa Joe, who tapped out to the ankle lock last month at Genesis, was prepared. He was ready. He had a strategy. He had a game plan. He employed it to perfection. And in spite of those repeated submission attempts, Samoa Joe fought through the pain. I couldn't believe the determination of Samoa Joe, how he was able to get out of one submission hold after another. He would realize where he was like there in the ring. He'd find the ropes. He would find an elbow, whatever it took to break the hole. And then when he got it in, and there was the tap out. Number one. There was the tap out, but the referee got, got hit in the eye. And now Joe realizes that may have been his only opportunity. And then the low blow. That's the one that shocked us. The low road, the low blow, the steel chair shot that backfired. Yes. Came back into the face of Kurt Angle. And you see Joe grabbing those straps, Mike, and pulling for everything that he's got. And, and then, there you see it again the chair shot, but it wasn't the chair shot that beat Kurt Angle. It was this. It was the rear naked choke. It was the Kakina clutch. There's the tap. You can't deny it. Look in the record books. Samoa Joe won. Kurt Angle won. They're still rocking the impact zone. The people are demanding a rematch in spite of what Kurt Angle said. They're yelling one more time as you watch Kurt Angle right there walk through the tunnel and what's going through that mine. And there you see Joe at the top of the tunnel on his. When people ask you, what differentiates TNA from every other organization? Tell them, Turning Point. One, more time. One, more time. One word cannot describe him. A ring cannot contain him. He is a natural born killer, driven by a relentless rage from within. Every match, a new level of confidence and power. Every victory, one step closer to the ultimate prize. Retribution will be paid in full. Joe is going to kill you. TNA Final Resolution. Live January 14th on Pay Per View. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a presentation of TNA Entertainment.